of this game. The winner here almost certainly headed through to the World Bowl. Both these teams won it. What do these two teams have to do to win today, Tim? Well, I'll tell you, it's just going to be a great game. I mean, when you look at <clears throat> Ryan, these guys, you know, Danny has to be the man. Dan has to be the man. All you hear from the coaches is that this guy has been making the plays, the key reads. He's just been the man. Secondly, they got to protect the football. I mean, they've been doing a great job of that. And in the big games, you have to always protect the football. And lastly, the stand-ins got to step up. We're talking about your Kevin Drakes, your Alonzo Johnsons. We're talking about the guys who've been in the back have to step it up so these guys can have a chance to win the football game. As for Jim Kreiner and the Scottish Claymores, a different set of factors for them. Absolutely. You know, here we go with Claymores. Last time these teams met, they have to establish the line of scrimmage. The first time they met, they didn't do that. They, off they offensive and defensive line didn't play that great. Secondly, these guys have to break down the bendable defense. I like that. Defenses, you have to do that by being patient. You have to take your time and meticulously take care of your business. And lastly, not give up the big plays. They gave up a lot of big plays last time these teams met, and they just can't afford to do it this game. So this game is underway. Silicio Sanford, who returned one against Amsterdam last week, looks for a seam here and gets to the 25-yard line, stopped by Steve Fisher. So the offense for the Scottish Claymores, led by Kevin Daff from the Tennessee Titans, who's been a model of quiet efficiency this season. The offensive line getting bigger and better as this season progresses under Jim Kreiner's tutelage. And Scott Cooper and Damon Gibson are the wideouts. Aaron Stecker, the running back in the middle there. Willie Tate, the H-back. Ricky Brady is the tight end. A very settled group of skilled position players. First down at the 25. Play action. And he's got a wide open man on first down. He finds his big tight end, Ricky Brady. Stopped by Jamie Baisley, but they'll pick up seven. Defensively, these are the guys to watch. Marquis Douglas and Derek Ham are sack monsters. Kendall Ogle, Dusty Renfro flanking Jamie Baisley, who's playing with that stomach flu. And Deshaun Mallard and Derek Gardner on the corners. Chris Aikens and Nick Ferguson are the safeties. Second down and three. This time they do go on the ground, and Stecker picks his way close to first down yardage. Nick Ferguson, the safety, coming up and making the stop, but from where they've spotted that, they will move the chains. You know, good safe plays, you, you know, your short pass, get daft into the game, establishing the line of scrimmage. I think that's what they want to do. I think they have to do that in order to win this game. Well, both teams, when we talked to them during the week, they stressed the importance of establishing the run. Teams always do, of course. So they line both their wide receivers to the right on first down from their own 35. And Daft feels a bit of pressure. Has a wide open man, Scott Cooper. 12-yard pickup for the veteran Glaswegian Derek Gardner with the stop. Cooper continuing just to make plays for this team. Just a simple route. Comes down, finds the open space. I mean, I like the way they're starting out the, uh, the game. I mean, they're just coming in, find the open hole, completing short passes. Safe. Safe and steady, which is how you describe Scott Cooper during his six-year career here in Scotland. First down, Claymores. Now they go on the ground. Stecker picking his way past tacklers and down at midfield by Derek Ham, who's allocated here from the Washington Redskins and who leads the league with nine sacks. You know, Nick, you can't say enough about, you know, Aaron Stecker. I mean, he's a player. I mean, he, he loaded the ground, he's got move, he's had speed, he can catch the football. Meanwhile, we have some confusion down on the field. little mental mistakes that coaches just hate well and that's what you want to stay away from in big games these two teams have had problems with penalties as well so the play is sent in but Scotland find themselves with a second and 12 after that penalty Donald Sellers is in the ball game 
Play action. Daft is hit. Down. Another sack for the Ryan Fire. It was Ernie Brown from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that's what we talked about coming into the game. We, we talked about the defensive line of the uh, Ryan Fire, and these guys are relentless. I mean, they're after the quarterback. They said we have to get pressure, and you know, they didn't even blitz. An excellent defensive line for Ryan Fire. Sack number three on the season for Brown. And after moving pretty effectively early on, Scotland face a big third and three here. And Daft forced to throw. He has time. He has Donald Sellers, but Sellers has got no chance of, com of completing a first down as Dark Gardner and Hickel combine. And it turns into just a three-yard gain and a little bit of disappointment for Scotland on their opening series. Well, yeah, penalties always shoot you in the foot. And, of course, you know the play of this defensive line. The last time these two teams met, this defensive line really got after the, uh, Claymore's offensive line, and they have to do something to stop that. So John Ballantyne, the Australian, will handle punting duties. Alonzo Johnson Checks. is the return man. And that takes a good Scotland bounce, and Johnson fields at the 21, and then runs into a blue wall and falls forward to the 25-yard line. Ben Snell was there to make the stop. So scoreless here at Hampden Park in Glasgow. Welcome back to Hampden Park, the Ryan Fire, with their first possession of the ball game. Their own 25-yard line. Remember the fire without their number one receiver, Jeff Ogden, who's on the sidelines on crutches. Danny Werfel under pressure from Threets, completes. And it's first down yardage for the fire. Matt Finkis stopping Pepe Pearson, but they'll move the chains. Danny Werfel has made a strong case for being named the league's player of the season. 20 touchdown passes on the season so far, behind a big offensive line that's anchored by Chris Brimer from the Dallas Cowboys at centre. Kevin Drake, Kendrick Nord stepping in for Ogden and Alonzo Johnson. Pearson, the running back. Lawrence Hart is the tight end. A gain of 12. They'll go on the ground. Pearson cuts back, breaks tackles, picks up another 14 yards before Ryan Taylor comes up and makes the stop. Let's take a look at this number one ranked Scotland defence. Three, Scarlett, Dingle and Mason get the start up front. The linebackers, Glover, Finkis and Hess are all busy playmakers. And the strength, Blackwell and Hawthorne at the corners. Blaine McElmurray and Marcus Ray are the safety men. I, I tell you, Ryan Fire's coming out and establishing that offensive line of scrimmage. First down in Scotland territory. Didn't establish much on that occasion. Pearson stopped by Tom Tovo, the Englishman, after a short gain. That'll bring up second down and long. Here we go. So, second down. Tovo, who's a three-year man here with the Scottish Claymores. Now, Drake is to the left. Johnson is to the right. A three-step drop, and they look for Johnson, and Johnson is cat caught, catches it, but Dwan Hawthorne read it all the way, and they will lose yardage. That's an excellent play by the corner. It's that now screen, that quick screen where you just give it to the inside slot guy and hope someone missed the tackle, but Mr. Hawthorne wasn't going for it on that play. But now from the Dallas Cowboys, who's had such a terrific season so far in the blue and silver of Scotland, read it and snuffed it out. So third down and 11 for the fire at midfield. Werfel unloads in the direction of Johnson, it hits Chris Bain and it's ruled incomplete and that is Scotland's turn to make a stand defensively. Outstanding play by Chris Bain. Here you see the receiver coming out. He'll come from the left part of your screen. All he do is runs a channel, and he's going to come out and run a seven. He just runs on it, looks back. Great play. Then you get the get off the football field. So Rodney Williams from the Washington Redskins will punt. They have two return men deep, the Claymores, Sanford and Gibson. 
it's a good deep kick from Williams that goes into the end zone for a touchback. So each team has had one possession. Each team's defense has held firm. So we're scoreless here at Hamden. Look like, look like Coach Hall wants to run the China 7 combination where, you know, it's a tougher throw, but it's a, a throw that, you know, with what this defense is playing, it's giving them. So. Slide, slide, slide. Yeah, both teams being forced into some early adjustments here. Such an important Silver, game. Silver. Scotland go on the ground. Stecker dances his way. Close to first down yardage and most fallen forwarders get as well. He'll just be short. Chris Aikens eventually on the stop. Stecker lost the helmet but gained close to 10 yards. Can't say enough. This guy is a player. I mean, great vision. It's all Aaron Stecker. Kind of re reminds me of Dalton Hill. A nice, compact guy that can catch the ball and do a lot of things well. So second and inches. For the Scottish Claymores. And they'll play it safe with Stecker, and Stecker dances his way for first down yardage. Dusty Renfro with an assist from Derek Ham on the stop, but it's first down Claymores. The big, the big boys are really fighting to establish the line of scrimmage. Well, both these two teams come into this game, of course, on the strength of two big wins. The right far coming from behind to win in Berlin a couple of weeks ago, then clobbering Frankfurt and Scotland, just annihilating Barcelona and Amsterdam in the last two weeks. So something's got to give here. And Daft has a lot of time. Has a wide open Donald Sellers into Ryan Fire territory. Brought down by Mallard, but a first down for the Claymores at the 48-yard line. That's what we said. Donald Sellers is the difference. Here he is lined up here in the slot. Good protection. Daft just looks good. Standing straight up, no pressure. Then Sellers come. Good move getting on the inside of the guy. Catch the ball. First down. What a difference Donald Sellers has made to this offense. Tremaine Allen is the motion man. On the ground they go. Ben Snell. And Snell breaks a couple of tackles. And a second effort from Snell gets him first down yardage. And Ben Snell comes into this game averaging 5.4 yards a carry. And he, he's often overlooked in the scheme of things. Big play. Here we go, new guy. Great surge by the offensive line. These guys got establishing that line of scrimmage. Ben Surge has good vision. Sneaks through there. Picks up almost 10 yards. No, he did pick up Tinio. He did. It's first down at the 38. Daft, that ball is tipped. And a great diving catch. Damon Gibson making it. It could have been a pick. Deshaun Mallard was in the territory. And that ball was tipped, and it was dangerous. Yes, it was. You got Damon Gibson at the bottom of your screen. Good tip. Great concentration by the wide receiver to come back and get that ball. Smart thinking from Gibson. And it's a six-yard gain as well. So second down, Snell, the ball carrier again, and S Snell just plowing his way past tacklers and picking up another first down. Dusty Renfro eventually stopping him, but Ben Snell seems to be a man on a mission today. How about Donald Snell? Ben Snell. Ben Snell's coming in the game, giving Stecker a rest and doing a great job. Here he is. Great surge by the offensive line once again, and he's just bolding over people, running over guys. I hear he's a load. He's a big man, Ben Snell. They list him at two Great three. Touch Snell's on the sidelines now. Stecker's in the backfield. On first down, Daft will throw. And goes in the direction of Silicio Sanford, who makes a, a shoestring catch. Kendall Ogle coming up and making the stop. But a couple of yards will bring up second down and eight. My fault, my fault. Three twenty-five line. the play going in, and Daft will reload it. Three twenty-five line on set. Lions. Second down. Sanford to the left. Sellers to the right. Stecker in the backfield. And over the middle they go to the big tight end. 
and it's inside the five yard line Ricky Brady eventually stopped by Jamie Baisley first and goal Scotland tight end on the right hand side I mean these guys are clicking on all cylinders he just makes a good move to get the guy to break on the outside and cuts underneath him and makes the grab the ball spotted at the six yard line and this has been a much smoother drive from Scotland Daft goes back on the ground Aaron Stecker looking to try and turn the corner and nowhere to go. He was kept honest by Chris Akins, and that's going to bring up second down and goal from the four. We talked about the bend but don't break philosophy, and that seems to be what they're doing. They are depending and hoping that the Claymore shoot themselves in the foot, and that's what they did on the opening drive. Well, Akins tracked uh, Stecker all the way on that play. There was nowhere for him to go. So, second down and goal. Set. Black and yay. On the ground again, Stecker again, Stecker cuts back, is swarmed after no gain. They were all there, Ken Anderson, number 69, will no doubt claim the tackle, but he had a lot of help. Well, I tell you, they got him to bend, but will they break? <laughs> well, yeah, it's, 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 it's true to form, isn't it, so far? This team will give up yardage, they don't like giving up points, that's the philosophy. Happened, okay? But in the red zone, Scotland highly efficient this season. Sanford left, Sellers right, third and goal. They look in the direction of Sellers, got him. Touchdown Scotland. They work Derek Gardner. Sellers, this is the difference. We said it in the opening that, you know, when they lose Jeff Ogden, the Claymore's gained Donald Sellers, his fifth TD catch in three weeks, four uh, weeks. It's, it's, it's been a remarkable transformation in this Claymore's offense since Donald Sellers came back. Yeah. And it's Sellers that caps an 80-yard drive, and Rob Hart, the Englishman who's never missed an extra point in a three-year career, maintains his streak. And the Scottish Claymores, in a game that both teams have called a must-win game for them, have jumped out to the early lead here. Hey, you see Kevin Dapp, quarterback Kevin Dapp. I'm telling you, this guy's poised, great throw, nice touch. He's been on fire. And Donald says, isolate the quarterback. One-on-one, -on -one, he won the matchup that time. I mean, the quarterback was there, but the receiver made the catch. Donald Sellers played for this team last year and made some big plays, made some catches for them, but came in with what he would admit was a bad attitude. This year, he rejoined the team mid midway through the season, a totally different player, much more focused, a real leader, and a guy that's just ignited this offense. Absolutely. I had a nice talk with the guy, and he said, T-Mac, you know, hey, I'm here. I may as well make the most of this opportunity, and I'm going to show these guys that I'm a player. And I'm telling you, this guy has been on fire the last three weeks. So, the Scottish Claymores on the board first. Remember, the winner here, almost assured of a place in the World Bowl. Johnson and Carter are the deep men. As Hart kicks off. And it's Johnson that will feel the shallow kick at the nine yard line. Runs into trouble and is down at the 27. Saran Stacey it was the veteran running back that made the special teams tackle. So Donald Sellers, well, you talked about the difference that this guy has made. I mean, just look at those numbers. Look at those numbers. I mean, they could go for, I mean, nearly doubled it. I mean, without the guy, 64 yards, give me a break. And you add this one person, and he comes in and look, 212 yards per a game. I mean, that makes this team a two-dimensional team. So, how does Danny Werfel and the fire respond? We have flags. There was movement at the line of scrimmage. That's what I'm asking. You know, going back to Donald Sellers, Nick, um, the fact that, you know, before the guy, they were one. Ryan, 12 players in the huddle. Be a five yard penalty. Well, that's, that's unbelievable. First down. To have that flag twice. And it's worth pointing <laughs> out that the, these are the two most penalized teams in the league as well. Yes, they are. We go and it's amazing that they're number one and two. We go zero. <laughs> Pass 14, go on one, ready. 
Get wide, get wide. Yes, they've done it in spite of the flags. But another one of those dumb penalties has pushed the fire in a hole here. First and 15. Werfel will throw. Looks in the direction of Kendrick Nord. That ball was hanging there. And a flag comes in very late on Cordell Taylor. I knew it had a possibility of being called. Well, Kendrick Nord is the man that's got to fill in for the injured Jeff Ogden. Like that. And it goes against Cordell Taylor. It's a tough call. It's a tough call to make. It's going to be coming over here from the right side of your screen here. If we got something we call under, and they bring the free safety up. Quarterback just throws it out there. You see the defensive back. Oh, Mr. Cordell got that just a tad too early. Ticky tack, ticky tack. They probably could have let that one go. Well, there's a former cornerback talking there, of course, too. <laughs> but it gives the Ryan Fire a major boost. They're at the 37 yard line of the Scottish Claymores. All right, uh, I think that's about it, guys. First down. Oh, count on the ground. Antoine Carter just blasting his way straight up the middle. Blaine McElmurray coming up from safety. Here's a guy that seems to have been around forever, Carter, and he's another guy that tends to get overlooked in the scheme of things. Oh, that, those are usually the be your better players. This guy, I mean, just explodes through the offensive line. Here you go, the big boys up front doing the job. Good push, good surge, making the blocks, and here's Antoine Carter just sees a great vision. Just explodes through the hole. Just an ankle tap from McLemurray, first down. Back on the ground they go again. Carter stops, checks, looks. Somehow he's still on his feet, and then he's gang tackled, but he'll pick up another five. Chris Bain eventually coming up and pushing him out of bounds, and they do have this good change-up. They'll start with Pepe Pearson in the backfield, but then they'll give him a rest and bring Carter in, and they don't lose anything. I think that's becoming a popular trend, even in the National Football League, having two good one-two punch change-up type running back. Tampa Bay does it with Warwick Dunn and the big all-star guy. Oh, he is a load. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he's scary. Second down and five from the 20. On the ground again, Carter. He'll pick up first down yardage. Mackle Murray on the stop. But Carter straight through the middle again, like a knife through butter. Another seven yards. First down. All you can say about that, Nick, is that the offensive line is getting the job done. They're getting the push, and they're making the block. I notice a different in a defense. I see different defensive back. Oh, they got the starters back in there. Drake left. Johnson, right, last few seconds of the first quarter. Carter still in the backfield, first down. Werfel gives it to Carter. Carter, nowhere to go. Michael Mason came from the backside and made the stop. He will lose two yards. And there's a fight for the ball down there as well. well that's been ruled. They still powered up down there. still all in there, aren't they? But I'm... It must have been, it looked like Carter was down to me. Clearly the claimer, Hurley Tarr, has come up with it. Uh, no turnover. I've noticed a couple of new corners. Tarver's down at the left corner. Maybe something happened to Blackwell. Well, let's see if we can see what happened with the football here. The ball did come loose. Looks like it came loose to me, Nick. Well, that's the end of the first quarter. It ends on a note of controversy. We're going to take a short break. Back in just a couple of moments. I don't know about this fumble. We talked about those guys not fumbling the ball. But this looks like a fumble to me. That ball is out before his knees hit the ground. Clearly out and clearly recovered by Scotland as well. Well, Galen Hall's team's only given up one fumble all season, which is phenomenal. Well, that really should have been number two. No instant replay in this league, of course. Second and long. Werfel will throw. Takes his time. Jabbar Threats sacks him. Jabbar Threats has just come on so strongly second half of the season. Sack number six on the year. 
There's Jabal Threats at the top of your screen. He just beats his mind, good hands, good feet, kept fighting, got to the quarterback. That's what you teach your defensive linemen. You have to teach them to have good hands because people are going to try to chop you, and you have to be able to stay on your feet. He did a great job of it. The right fire offensive line has only given up 14 sacks. And it means third and long for Werfel, who will take to the air again. The pressure comes. This time from Threets and Hess. And he unloads it. There's a flag. It's incomplete. And Werfel was clobbered as he threw the ball. But we have a flag on the near sideline. A long way away from the play. That's wrong, Werfel's bell. And it's a hold, and it's against the Claymores. And that's a real costly one. Away from the play. I mean, you, you probably can't see the holding. You could hear the collision. Defense, number 46, five yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Chris Bain, the nickelback, and that really is a costly one. Very costly. Anytime you hold, make a defensive penalty like that, I mean, it gives the offense an automatic first down. More time on the field, more plays, more film to look at the following day. And a chance for Danny Werfel to regain his thoughts and his composure after that hit from Hess and Threets. And just like the Claymores, highly efficient in the red zone. They give it to Pepe Pearson, who looks to turn the corner. And will pick up five yards. Before he stops, Corey Blackwell, the left corner, coming up and making the stop. That's a good first down play. Anytime you can pick up five yards, four or five yards on first down, that's a good play. Pepe, we talked to him the other day, and he seemed to be a pretty confident guy. Big Ten, Ohio State product. Guy who bounced around a lot of practice squads last season, Detroit, Cleveland, Chicago. Guy looking to land himself a job come September. Second down. Werfel will throw, he's got a man in the end zone, Kevin Drake, the former Claymore, gets his team back on terms. Oh, beautiful route. Beautiful route by Kevin Drake. A simple, you know, <clears throat> post corner. You know, you teach the defensive back when you get in the red zone that you do not want to give up the inside route. And most offenses know this, so he countered with a post corner. So Kevin Drake, who did his former teammates for two touchdowns in Dusseldorf in the first game, adds another one here. A Manfred Bergsmuller, the 50-year-old German, hits the post and the crossbar. And what are they ruling? <laughs> oh, well, when your luck's in, your luck's in. <laughs> now, Manfred Bergsmuller will tell you he aimed for that. But I don't think I've ever seen an extra point do anything <laughs> like that in my life. This is funny to me. I've never seen this before. I tell you, when this kind of thing happens, you know it could be your day. <laughs> Absolutely. Watch the ball. It's kit. It hits it. Bing! It must have went on the inside and through. Oh. It's a good kick. Incredible. So we are level. <laughs> And the 50-year-old former German soccer player, who is perfect on point afters this season, remains perfect. There's little things like that can just make you think, yeah, this is our day. Oh, here's Kevin Drake. He's just been on a tear this year. All he's going to do is run a post corner. You know, you got Corey Blackwell. He takes the inside, looks inside, runs the seven. Easy touchdown pass. And much has, much has been made of Kevin Drake coming back to play against the team that basically did not protect him last year. And he said, yeah, I had a point to prove. I wanted to show these guys what they were missing. But it also, earlier in the season, he was attributed as, as really saying some bad things about the coaching staff in Scotland, which he denied. But nevertheless, there is, a, there is a case to be made here that Drake wants to show them, hey, you shouldn't have let me go. You know, we're athletes, and, and that's what we want to do. I mean, we're going to show a guy that, hey, you should have took me because I'm a player, and I'm going to show you that you messed up. Blackwell and Samford are the deep men. Sanford takes it at the 10. Gets some blockers and can get a big return going here. Gets past the kicker and gets out to midfield. The blocking in front of him was set up beautifully and Sanford made the most of it. He had a big return last week, 95-yard touchdown pass. This guy here has been a spark on this special team. 
Gibson, I tell you what, you know, he, he may not be packing a lot of weight, but I tell you, he took a lick on that play, and Salacio Adams just takes off. Well, he averaged 38.7 per return coming in to this game. And we have a change at quarterback. These two teams will rotate their quarterbacks. Marcus Crandall from the Kansas City Chiefs takes over from Kevin Daft. And his first play is batted up in the air and eventually falls incomplete after Ricky Brady turned defender. But the pressure came storming through from Anthony Mitchell. And that's a rude wel welcoming to the game for Crandall. A very rude awakening, but that's a heads-up play by the tight end. That's a, you, I mean, you, you can't draw it up. Because if you don't do that, I think the, the, the safety picks it. I mean, the linebacker, Renfro, picks it off. Two strikes, 24. Listen up. Two strikes, 24. Wide shot across. All the way. Ready? Wide shot across. It looked like a pass to me. Just Second. a short pass to get him in the game. Second down and 10. Four, we'll 39. Hope, we'll hope for better what? protection. On you, on you, Ken, on you. <laughs> and he completes it to Ricky Brady. And they'll pick up five yards. Brady stopped by Kendall Ogle, the outside linebacker. And that'll bring up third down and five. Crandall has also provided a spark for this team as well at times. His, his teammates call him Touchdown Crandall. I mean, it seems like every time he gets in there, every five plays, he scores at least two touchdowns. Right, right, kick. Right, right, kick. So it's got one in fire territory, just. Four, 38, hot. Facing a third down. Crandall will throw, and he's got himself a man wide open again. Ricky Brady fights for extra yardage now. Where are they going to spot that? Looks like they're going to give him the first down. Baisley on the stop. Great second effort from Brady. You can tell it's a big game, and that was the kind of plays you get from guys in big games. There's your tight end right over here. He's just going to go down, come across the middle. Gets open. Sits. Uses that big body. Brady's full catch of the ball. Now. Stecker gets the carrier. Jamie Baisley read that one all the way then. Had some help from Ernie Brown, who finished him off. But it was Baisley that made that play. Baisley's playing with ill, but Baisley's playing some good ball. This front four is relentless. They had a great game against these guys the first time they met and looked like they're trying to repeat that performance. Loss of yardage. And Baisley playing with. Stomach flu. We had a chat with him on the field just no more than an hour ago. He said, I'm out, I'm feeling bad. But you wouldn't know it the way he started out in this ball game. Crandall will throw on second down and long and looks in the direction of Scott Cooper and had no chance to show Mallard, in fact, was thinking interception. That's going to bring up third down and long. I mean, I'm looking at this defense of Ryan, and I'm saying, how can these guys be last in, I mean, in interception and completing? I mean, this defense is good. I'm looking at these defensive line and this front seven linebackers, and these guys are stout. There's the, there's the catalyst for it all. Number 53, Jamie Baisley. He's the linchpin. The man Galen Hall could least afford to lose. So a long third down now for Scotland. Crandall will drop to pass. Now he steps up. Can't find Sellers. If Sellers could have hung on, it would have been a first down. Instead, the punting unit comes on. Well, he had good protection that time. The offensive line did his job. But you, I mean, you look at this Ryan defense. I mean, they're last in total defense. They're last in passing yard, passing defense, and yet they're in this game. So John Ballantyne will kick to that man there, Alonzo Johnson. And it's a high-hanging kick that Johnson pulls for a special catch on. Uh, Alonzo Johnson, fair catch as a flag comes in. Ball is at the 17. The flag came in in the backfield. And both coaches said to us yesterday, special teams could make a, a real difference in this ball game. Yes, they sure did. And the special teams coach of Ryan Fire said that, you know, losing Jeff Ogden is really hurting their team. And, you know, I guess the plus would have to go to the Claymores. Well, that flag hurts the Ryan Fire, a team that's been plagued by penalties this season. And Galen Hall said, I can't understand it and I can't explain it. It just seems to be one of those things. And potentially this could be very costly. On who?
Well, it looks like the fire will retain possession. But we still wait for the call from Walt Anderson. Holding on the receiving team. That penalty will be assessed from the end of the kick, five yards, first down run. So, seven apiece here at Hamden Park in Glasgow. We'll be back in a moment. Okay. Well, the, the Saint run wise. I got you, I got you. If, Who if has the inside gonna, receiver uh, when they get held? You know, you got got Welcome yeah. back Every to Hamden Park. Nick Halling with Tim McKay. Seven apiece. A little audio difficulty. Matt Laddle's in the game. The left-handed quarterback from the Carolina Panthers steps in for the Ryan Fire. And this also a designed move from Galen Hall. Lytle always gets second quarters, and he starts deep in his own territory with four receivers in on first down. And they'll go on the ground on the draw play that draws a crowd. Chris Ward. The Hounds of Scotland are barking. Three-yard loss. You're talking about the number one defense in this league. In every category, statistically, they are the best. Overall, against the run, against the pass, in takeaways, interceptions, sacks, <laughs> third downs, you name it. That's playing defense. That's Nick. defense. Second down and 12 after the stop. Lytle, play action. Looks, looks. Now he's forced to take off. Runs into John Hess. You know, that's what Matt brings to this team, mobility. I think he has better feet, and he has the ability to beat you with his feet and throw the ball. He staggered away as he got up. He seemed to lose his footing a bit there, but uh, trying to clear his head. Now it's like a fighter that just got caught, and now he's dropped to one knee again. He really had his bell rung there by John Hess. Yes, John Hess definitely big bagged him. And you know, you don't want your quarterback to do that. Cost in the National Football League. What do they tell him to do? Slide. He's hurting right now. Oh, let's see if we can take another look at it. It was, it was the collision with Hess that really hurt him. There he is. Mr. Lytle comes out. Pressure flushes him. Pointing, directing traffic. He say he should have slid right there. That's what you do in the NFL. Well, there's Hess from one side and Noel Scarlett from behind. And Lytle continues to receive treatment. You know, Nick, that's what you call a quarterback sandwich if you don't slide. <laughs> He's still down. Well, he was the meat in that sandwich there. A man from the Carolina Panthers who, of course, sent Damian Craig to this league last year, and he lit it up for the Scottish Claymores and got himself a job, and that's what Matt Lytle's hoping to emulate here. He may find it tough in Charlotte next season. Yes, it, it looks like it. I mean, look like they're set with Berlin. I mean, Berlin had an incredible year last year. Damian Craig lit up this league for 600 yards one game. Of course, Jeff Lewis, you know, they just gave him a big-time contract. So, Matt's just going to have to continue to improve and work on his game and get better. Of course, I know one thing he's going to learn how to do now, and that's slide. Definitely. <laughs> Danny Werfel, of course, a free agent now after being released after three nightmen years in New Orleans. It's tough, such a tough place to be a quarterback. Yeah, but you can't put that all on Danny Werfel. I mean, Absolutely New Orleans is just an awful team, you know, and to put that all on Danny would be fair to him. Well, he's done a lot of good things here in this league as well, but I'm sure we'll earn him a good look. So Werfel back. Facing a third down and four. And the pressure comes and Werfel goes down. And this Scottish defense relentless. Tom Tovo from Southampton makes the hit. The hounds have gotten the hounding now. They told me last night that they were going to come after this quarterback and we're going to show you, T-Mac, that that last game was a fluke. And there's Jim Tomsula, the defensive line coach, who fires these guys up. Sack number three on the year for the Englishman. That's right. I mean, these guys knew that they got their butts whipped the first time, and they say, we're going to redeem ourselves this week. And they're playing great ball so far. Both defenses stepping up. Gibson, the return man, Rodney Williams from the Redskins, will kick it away from his own end zone, has trouble handling it, then gets rid of it. And that takes a bounce at the 42, and Gibson fields at the 47 and just gets out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Mallard pushed him out of bounds. So... The Scottish Claymores will have excellent field position when we return. 
Well, you're looking at Damon Gibson. You know, a lot of pump returners don't make good decisions, but here's a great decision to catch this ball on one hop. I mean, he saved this team at least 15 yards, at least 10, 15 yards, and give them excellent field position. Great play by Damon. And the ball spotted at the 37 yard line. Tremaine Allen in motion. All kinds of movement at the line of scrimmage there. And Grant will drop the ball as well. <laughs> Derek Ham, it may have been that jumped, but there were at least three fire defensive linemen that flinched. The strength of this Ryan defense is this defensive line, and these guys are ready to come off that ball, as you can see. We'll sort this out and see who was the guilty culprit. Oh, quite a conversation going on down there. I mean, I just love this defensive line. Prior to the snap, encroachment on the defensive nose guard. Five yard penalty, first down. Just pick a number here, really. Just pick a number. One of these guys, I think, is the big guy on the end. Oh, no, it, was it was either one. Kenny Anderson moved as well. Oh, dare it. Larry Fitzpatrick flinched. Another flag for Galen Hall's Ryan Fire. Wow. 69 penalties for 533 yards. And that was going into this game. Oh, 38! So first and five. Crandall, play action. Has some time, has a man, Sellers. Sellers out of bounds at the 15-yard line, Steve Fisher. We talked coming into the break that, you know, losing Jeff and the Claymore's gaining, gaining Sellers. Here he is, Sellers, got a lot of cushion from this guy. Just a simple route, he goes in, sets the defensive back up, breaks out. I've always said that, you know, I've never understood the bail technique. You're just giving up the out. So, first down. <laughs> Crandall gives it to Stecker. Stecker dances his way past tacklers. First down yard is inside the five. Stopped by Kendall Ogle with help from Nick Ferguson. But the Claymores rocking and rolling here. They're at the three. You got to love the offensive line of the Claymores. These guys are getting it done. They're walling guys out. And of course, you have a great running back in Aaron Stecker. Here's a guy who has great vision, great legs. Sees it, just explodes out to the outside and digging towards that end zone. Well, Aaron Stecker paid the price, though. He's limped off and is now going to get treatment. And Sellers is wide open to the right, but they couldn't get the ball off quick enough. And they give it to Ben Snell, and Snell goes in untouched. Touchdown, Scotland. Snell's first of the year. We talked about the key being this offensive line, establishing that line of scrimmage, and that's exactly what the Claymores are doing. They're taking this defensive line out of this ball game. Stecker limped out. Snell stepped up. And the Claymores are back in front. Here's Rob Hart with the extra point. And none of the razzle-dazzle stuff that we saw on the last point. And Scotland safely 14-7 in front. 7.35 left here in the first half. Now, I know Sellers is having a big day, but don't you think you ought to have somebody on him? He's wide open over there. Hey, he finally gets out there. But it didn't make any difference. They gave it to Ben Snell. Ben Snell, and he's been busting through all day. That's a cakewalk in the end zone. Well, of course, Snell getting in because Stecker, who'd made that play earlier, had limped out. But either way, they're getting it done, the Claymores, and Stecker seems to be shaking it off okay. Must be, but you know, I get the sense that this is gonna be a good game, Nick. I, I, I just think that, you know, by this being a big game, that both of these teams realize the importance of it, and they're coming after each other. Really well, are. They both need it. They are the best two teams in the league by common consent. But neither of them can seriously think World Bowl yet. They both need this. Maybe that's why these fans just seem a little bit more passionate than usual. There's a real atmosphere here at Hamden Park. You can just feel it. It's airy. And I'm loving it. It's just that big game type feeling, Nick. I mean, when you're getting big games, it, it just feels good. Well, you were a big, big game guy anyway, Tim, in your career. Rob Hart kicks it off. Carter and Johnson, the deep man. Carter takes it at the nine. 
Jenkins. Carter runs into trouble. Ben Snell with the stop. So the Ryan Fire looking to respond. And interesting, Werfel stays in because Lytle is still out of there. <laughs> now, is that because he's shaken up or because they've decided, no, we're going to work? He looks pretty shaken up to me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> shaking out the cobweb still. So, what can they do with Danny Werfel at the controls? Looking for a response here against the league's number one defence, and they're coming again. And Werfel is hit and goes down. Threats and Dingle. Dingle will be credited with it. This defensive line, the hounds are barking. Nick, the hounds are barking. These guys were fired up last week. They knew that they got it taken to them last game. And it was a two-edged sword there. All of the hounds, these guys are just fired up. They're coming out. I mean, what is Werfel going to do? He's ducking. He's running for his life. Well, he gets away from Threats straight into Nate Dingle. Jim Tom Sula never has any trouble firing these fellas up. But they're pouring through right now. This against the league's number one offensive line. And now they'll throw on first, second down, and it's complete. Short of first down yardage, Drake. John Hess applied the pressure on Werfel, and now it's Werfel's turn to be shaken up. And he looks out of it. He's probably taking too many licks. Well, it was Dingle, I think, that might have come through. And, and he wears a microphone for us, Danny Werfel. We'll hear no! what this feels like. Oh. Wow. <laughs> no wonder Matt Lytle won't wear a microphone. <laughs> he doesn't want us to hear what it feels like. And now Lytle is being dragged back in because Werfel will have to sit out at least one play. They only have two quarterbacks on their roster. Wow. Jabbar Threes, Antonio Dingle, Noel Scarlett. And Michael Mason, these guys They're are ringing their bells. They are big bagging them, knocking them down. So Lytle, who was looking like a boxer that was still recovering from a KO just 30 seconds ago, he's in there. Galen Hall must feel like he's getting KO'd. Zero, here. 59 F fast. Well, whatever it is, it's going to be fast. Well, they actually gained some yardage on the play. So it's going to be third down and seven. And what can the left-hander from Carolina conjure up here with four wide receivers in? They're coming again. Lytle completes to Antoine Carter, who's got first down yardage. Gutsy play from the fire. Marcus Ray pushing him out of bounds. That was large. This team, this team will not quit. Good line. The line say we have to protect our quarterback and give him time. So they gave him a little bit more time. It's a simple play, just dump it to the running back. That's what you do when you can't get pressure. I mean, when you get too much pressure from a defensive line, you just give them something simple, let them complete, and get their confidence back up. And the pressure was really on this fire offense at that moment. How they needed that. Good call, sent in by Bart Andrus, the offensive coordinator. Lytle stays in. Now he's going to take off again with three behind it. Seems to survive that one, but your heart is in your mouth every time you see these fire quarterbacks being flushed out of the pocket. Because the hounds of Scotland are barking. Simmons, three, and the game. I mean, they're fired up. Well, it's, it's really quick a number, isn't it? They're all making plays at the moment. Dingle, Tovo. You think it has something to do with those pounds per sack? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they have, a, they have a little pot. If you make a big play, some money goes into the pot. Second down and long. Lytle will throw. The pressure's coming from Hess. They get it off. Pepe Pearson, though, dropped for a loss by Finkins. This defense is swarming right now. Excellent play by Matt Finkins. Matt Finkins is a middle linebacker. Screens are tough. You have to have somebody that can read, play discipline in their technique, and the middle linebacker right there, Matt Finkins, reads it well comes through and makes a shoestring tackle, because if he don't make it, Antoine still may be running. Well, you can hear the music of doom in the stadium, and it's another third and long for the fire. They load up on the right side with their snug formation, three wide receivers. Michael looks in that direction, and is hit, and 
goes down again. Michael Mason. What a defensive stand from Scotland. Well, receivers here, all of them up top. The defensive backs do a great job on this play. You go back. They run a short route, the deep route. The receivers got them all covered. Here's the Blaine McAmurray coming up, and it causes these kind of sacks. So it's a two-way affair. This actually is a coverage stack. Michael Mason. Now comes Rodney Williams. Sanford and Gibson both back deep. <coughs> and it'll be Sanford that fields at the 28 and takes it with a flying start. Tripped up by Jamie Baisley, the middle linebacker who made a, a huge tackle on special teams. Well, the winner here almost certainly going to the World Bowl, which will be in Frankfurt in Germany on June the 25th on Fox Sports and everywhere else around the world on Sky Sports in England, DSF in Germany. That kind of punt right there is one that you can take for six. A straight line driver, the, the, the punt returner catches the ball with momentum. So first down at the 43, Scotland leading 14-7. Crandall has a man, Cooper. Cooper is wrapped up instantly. Mallard with the stop. But they'll pick up five yards, and uh, as we said at the top of the show, they're both almost there. The five need a win, but they can get in with an Amsterdam loss. Scotland just need to win two, but they can get in with one win and a Barcelona loss. It's, it's almost there for both these teams. So this is a very big game today. Second down. They'll go on the ground. Stecker runs into a whole bunch of trouble. Kendall Ogle may have been the first man there. Dusty Pierce, the German linebacker joined him. Pierce, who doesn't see an awful lot of playing time in this scheme. The man who was with the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, on a scholarship, learned his football there. 324, wide stick on one. So, third down and two. Sanford left, Cooper right. And they'll throw. Over the middle they go. And it's first down yardage for the Claymores. They needed two, they got three. Jamie Baisley with the stop, but it's a first down and the Scottish Claymores. And when you heard Marcus Randall say, why stick? It was just going to be, get beyond the chain, stick. I'll give you the ball. Let's keep the chains moving. Just over three minutes remaining in the first half. They're in fire territory again at the 45, first down. Back on the ground. Stecker dancing, not for much though. They strung him out, just as they did in the first game. Baisley again. Baisley was all over Stecker in the first game. There's a lot of fight in this Ryan Fire defense. This front seven, I'm very impressed with it. Like I said, the only weakness is that secondary, and right now, you know, they're, they're not really challenging the secondary. They're trying to establish that line of scrimmage, just like we said they had to do at the beginning of the game. Left, left! As you can probably tell, Jamie Baisley is wired for sound as well. Second and long. Under! Crandall with time. Can't find a man, it's picked off. Baisley. I caught it! I caught it! What a play! It just went very quiet here in Hamden. Very quiet. This is a man playing from his sick bed and just making plays all over the field. <coughs> sort of reminds you of that time when Michael Jordan was sick. You remember he had one of the biggest games of his life. And you may see that in Mr. Jamie Baisley. Here he is, Mr. Baisley, sitting in the middle of the football field. They're playing a cover two coverage. All he does is come to the middle of the field because that's the weakness of the defense. Steps in and makes a great play. Players play no matter what the circumstances, and Baisley, who's dragging himself around, somehow made that play. And it's put the fire offense back, in, back on the field. Danny Werfel back in at quarterback. Werfel has time this time and dumps it off. And not much going on there for Pepe Pearson. Matt Finkis was there. Phil Glover was there. This is a big game, Nick. Really is. And these teams are playing like it. There's no quit in either one of these football teams.
because of the importance of this football game, and I like it. And I'm it's, pumped up. Oh, yeah. And it's all there <laughs> to play for as we reach the two-minute warning here in the first half in Glasgow. It's Scotland leading the Ryan Fire 14-7. Two minutes left, first half. Scotland leading the fire, 14-7. A fire team without Jeff Ogden. Kevin Drake has helped fill the void. He's proved his case. He was with Scotland last year. Those were his numbers. This year, just against Scotland alone, he's put up pretty good numbers. But they've got to find some production from another source. And on second down and seven, the four-wide receiver package in for Danny no. Werfel. No. No. The blitz comes again. Werfel steps up, hits, down, flags. Chris Ward, the first man there, flags everywhere. And Werfel just held on too long. He couldn't find a receiver. Yeah, I think it's going to be some type of face mask, but they're doing all the right things defensively. They're coming out the Werfel. There's the face mask. Oh, but this 15 yards not going to help. The Hounds of Scotland, 99, coming down from the bottom of the screen. Great pressure, good moves. But this is one of these. Uh, uh, ooh, yeah, man, can't argue with that one. You can't argue with that one. I mean, he grabbed a whole lot of things. Number 99 on the defense. The penalty will be assessed from the spot of the foul. 15 yards, automatic first down. Well, Chris Ward. Chris Ward is the, the leader of the uh, the defensive front seven. He's the veteran, the 26-year-old. He says, I'm the old guy. Oh, that 26? Give me a break. <laughs> that's, that's what I said to him. <laughs> but these defensive guys, they have to they have to pay a penalty for any 15-yard flags they draw. So Chris Ward's pocket will be lighter no! tonight. No! And it keeps that no! drive alive. First down, Werfel will throw. If he can find a man, he just gets it off. Pearson is sandwiched. John Hess zero. with the stop. Zero. But I mentioned that uh, Chris Ward, he'll be zero. paying a price. Yeah, I think I think you were having a word with some of these guys about exactly uh, what kind of funds they uh, lose. And yeah, there you go. Five pounds for offside in practice, 15, and of course 30 for the big one. Second down, Werfel. Looking for Kendrick Nord. There was a contact there, but Nord still made the catch on Hawthorne. And Kendrick Nord, who's barely been a factor in this offense since joining from Frankfurt, making a huge catch, but will it stand? I don't understand what Duan Hawthorne's doing. Looked like he's he quit on the play. It's against Nord. And a personal foul against Scotland as well. I think they were offset, but it just looks like Mr. Hawthorne is just casually going through the play, not thinking that the ball is coming his way. Well, we have a flag in the offensive backfield as well. Pass interference, number 18 on the offense. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 93 on the defense. Those penalties offset. We will replay second down. That's Rasheed Simmons. You got the, the corn, Duan Hawthorne, and the wide receiver over here. It's just a simple go route. But if you, as you watch Dewan Hawthorne, it seems like he's just casually running. I, I really don't see the offensive pass interference. The Claymore's got away with one on that one. Well, second down and eight. There's the fellas that drew the flags. So the fire offense staying composed in the face of this Scotland pressure. And Werfel in trouble again, just unloads it. And that'll be a flag because it's caught by an offensive lineman, which is not <laughs> something you're allowed to do, Craig Heimberger. The but hounds of Scotland. Werfel is running for his life out there. Oh, I tell you, I see a lot of jail breaks, prison breaks, furloughs. These guys are really coming after that quarterback. That'll go against number 75, Craig Heimberger. But quite frankly, Danny Werfel. We talk about these cornerbacks down at the bottom of your screen. You can't blitz unless you guys can play man. Here, good technique, good jam at the top. Got him covered like a blanket. 
And that causes a lot of sex, too. Then. Illegal touching of a forward pass, number 75 on the offense. By rule, the penalty is an incomplete pass, third down. There is simply, as you say, nowhere for Danny Werfel to go. Absolutely nowhere to go. And So third down and eight. Somebody's gonna hook right beyond the first down chain. Four wide receivers in. Here we go, here we go. Five oh! Five oh! Here we go. Blue! Blue! Look. Big play. <laughs> Werfel gets rid of it. It's complete. Right at first down. The yard. Kevin Drake down, stopped down, by down. Hurley Tarver. The they best. may Five. just rule it short. <laughs> Give it's going to be real oh, close. Well, it depends on the spot. And, you know, Danny Werfel helped us out by saying that be hooked, because somebody had to go right beyond the chain, hook up, get the first down. Here he is, Mr. Drake, right there in the middle. He's just going to go. He's playing bump, bump and run coverage on Mr. Tarver here, Hurley Tarver. Just turns around beyond the first mark. Down mark and makes the catch. But not a favorable spot at all, and you heard Danny Werfel complaining about that. Fourth down at the 43. Now they just, they're and, another, going. and another thing I thought that, you know, the Claymores had to do was play good on third down. I mean, they had to get off the field. The first time they played, they didn't play good on third down. Stay right over the ball. Don't get out. We got zero. 104 left. 692, all slam, double slam, both sides, right? It's coming. It's quick. Now let's watch the technique of the corners and see if they give up the inside. Fourth down, the fire, trying to keep this drive alive. A minute left, first half. Down by seven. And it's almost picked off by Tava, who seemed to have both hands on it. It could have been a pick instead, though. The Claymores will take over on downs. We knew they wanted to run slants. He's got a good inside position, a good inside position by this defensive back. And they took away the middle. Pretty good job. Well, that was a bad throw, too. Kind of was thrown behind him, but big play on fourth down. So, the Claymores defensively hold firm. Uh, Marcus Crandall has precisely one minute to try and move this offense, at least in the field goal range against a fire defense that's played it pretty tough here in this first half. Oh, 24! Hey. And Crandall feels the pressure, has to get rid of it. And nowhere for Silicio Sanford to go. Hey. Jamie no, 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 no. Baisley inevitably seems to be all over the field, just as he was in the first game between these two teams. Well, it's about time we mic somebody worth micing, a linebacker. Boy, I tell you, <laughs> you really get a taste of what's happening on that football field. Three-second timeout. Let's go, hurry up. Jamie Beasley, I tell you, yeah, he's off. We call a baller. And that is a compliment, right? That's a compliment by Let's players. go, here you go. Let's you know, go. We call you here, a baller. Let's go. Come here. You are a baller. Let's that go. means you fly around, you yeah, make plays, quarterback. you let's make go. things Rush, happen. Tuesday catch, ready? And Mr. Beasley's a baller. Well, he's the anchor of this defensive Watch unit. Watch the Nick. He's the leader. Let's go. Galen Hall was telling us yesterday he just fits this system like a glove. A very smart, savvy, gutsy player. 438! Second and 10. Crandall from the shotgun. Now steps up, can't find Damon Gibson. And Crandall has just not been in sync with this offense since coming in in relief of Kevin Daft. No, he hasn't been nearly as effective as Kevin. Kevin has really started the game off well. I mean, throwing nice tight fire, nice touch balls to uh, Donald Sellers. Yeah, that's what you want in your quarterback, particularly in a big game. Well, Daft completed eight of nine. Crandall, six of 11. They've both got a two. They're both masterminded a touchdown for right? But now it's third and 10. Four, 38! Scotland. They try and get something going in these last few seconds. And Crandall is hit. 
And down. And it's another sack for the Ryan Fires. Ernie Brown, his second of the ball game. And in all the talk about those fire defensive sackers, Douglas and Ham, Ernie Brown's having himself a ball game here as well. Looks like it. I guess he see these guys have 17 sacks between them. Let me get a part of this party here. Well, he may only get half a sack there because he got some help, but nevertheless, Brown's made an impact in this ball game. The man from the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it means the three plays took 29 seconds off the clock, and they lost yardage. That wasn't good. I don't think that was a very smart uh, series of downs for the Claymores because you have to take time off the clock. I mean, now they've given these guys a chance. Who knows what could happen on the special teams play? Maybe Alonzo Johnson pops one. This wasn't very good clock management by the Claymore on that particular series. Yeah, Johnson, the return man. John Ballantyne, the Aussie, will kick it to him. Johnson's average only 6.1 yards. But has the potential to break one. Ballantyne needs to get off a good one here, and he does. And Johnson makes a mess of it and then manages to recover it but pays the price first man there was chris bain who gave him nothing so we're 22 seconds left in this first half i tell you i'd be worried more concerned with mr johnson's back there because this guy you know he can give it up i mean he's inconsistent a lot of times he tries to make things happen and talking to the special teams coach well, he was trying to make a play there, and Jeff Reinbold there, the special teams coach, was telling you about it. He sometimes just tries to do a little too much. Yes, he does. And he really got crushed on that particular play. There was the potential for disaster there as well, but they got away with it. And what could Danny Werfel do? The smart thing, take a knee and take it in at halftime. Well, they are a second-half team, they're on fire as well. Absolutely. Outscoring their team opponent 74 to 21. So the top two teams in the NFL Europe League separated by just seven points as we reach half time here at Hamden. Everything to play for, it's Scotland 14, the Fire 7, the winner almost certainly through to the World Bowl. Plenty at stake. Join us for the second half in just a moment. Welcome back to Glasgow 14-7 here Scotland over the Rhine fire this game very much in the balance mixed fortunes for Scotland's two quarterbacks in that first half Kevin Daft coming in and looking pretty effective Marcus Crandall coming in and finding the fire defensively really stiffening but you talk about defense and really what Scotland did in that first half was taking your breath away, Tim McKay. Uh, man, I would love to be playing for this defensive ball club. I mean, they're number one in everything. They're showing it. Number one against the pass. Number one against rushing defense. Number one on third down efficiency. Number one in it, in it, in it, INT taking the ball away. They are putting together a show defensively. And five sacks and endless pressures from that front group and the linebackers as well. But the Ryan Fire may be down, but they're not out, and they're never out as long as Danny Werfel is healthy. He is a second-half quarterback. This is a second-half team. Yes, they are. Outscoring their opponents 74 to 21 in fourth quarter in particular. Hey, hey, These guys do not quit, and there's absolutely not a piece of it in Danny Werfel. Johnson and Carter. Another return man. The ball falls off the tee. Sometimes those are good, you know, so you can clear your throat. <laughs> yep, absolutely. The rain has held off here in Glasgow this afternoon. It's getting cloudy now, though. The stand-ins, like we said, somebody has to step up other than Kevin Drake. Well, who's going to step up for the Ryan Fire? And the ball comes off the tee once again. And the wind is picking up. You know, I nearly said there, Tim, I nearly said it always rains here in Glasgow, but I've got a couple of Glaswegians stood next to me, so I kind of thought twice about that. Right. <laughs> but you were here all week. Did I was it rain here all for week. You? Rain practically every day. Yeah. I saw the sun maybe a day and a half. You were lucky. <laughs> now, can we see the second half of the third attempt? Hard. 
gets us underway. Carter fields the kick and yard in his end zone and takes a knee with no one near him. Yeah, very uh, interesting. Nevertheless, touchback. Well, there's confirmation of what you were saying. The Ryan Fire, very much a second half team. Yes. Let's see what Galen Hall's outfit is made of here. Now, you know these guys are missing Jeff Ogden. 44 receptions, seven touchdown passes. Is it going to be Alonzo Johnson or is it Kai Lick? Yeah, the German national receiver. Somebody's got to step up. On the ground they go. Carter, who's had a pretty good first half. There's a flag down as Carter cuts back against the tackle from Finkis. Gets first. And there's a hold. And it's against the fire. So that one's coming back. We talk about a drive killer and penalties. Holding kills you. I mean, it kills you. It doesn't give you a chance. Holding. Offense. Number 66. 10 yard penalty. Repeat. First down. Dan Collins, the left tackle. Well, flags continuing to haunt these two teams. The fire with more flags than anyone else. And Scotland second in the league. And there is Jeff Ogden on crutches on the sidelines and how they miss him. Drake is wide right. Kyrick Lick, the German, is wide left with Johnson in the slot. First and 20. The pressure comes from Mason, but they manage to dump it off. And Antoine Carter does a bit of high hurdling and will pick up 11 yards before John Hess tackles him. That's going to bring up second down and nine. Well, they picked up the 10-yard penalty plus. Usually you expect that. You know, you get teams bigger and you got back. They pin the heels back and come out there. You jump a screen on them. Zero. Pass 14, go. Why under H over on one? Pass 14, go. I think Kevin Drake. I'm feeling Kevin Drake on this play, Nick. Well, watch the... Watch for number 86 there in that situation. And Werfel has a lot of time. And he has Alonzo Johnson who got himself wide open. Matt Finkis eventually bringing him down at midfield. But Johnson managed to get himself lost in the crowd there. Here's Alonzo coming from your left side of your screen. It's just a simple play. The offensive line done his job this time. You know, gave Danny Werfel time to throw the football. There he goes. He clears out, catches the ball. We said that somebody had to step up to take the place of Jeff Ogden and maybe Alonzo Johnson hurt. Well, Johnson came in with 29 catches this season. And there's another guy that's made a contribution as well. Antoine Carter on the ground. He'll pick up five. Finkis and Ray combining on the stop. But Carter's versatility so important for this fire offense. Yes, it is. This guy can catch the ball. He's a great runner. He has great vision. And looks like he's playing with a lot of ump. That's what we call getting out. Is that technical? That, uh, <laughs> that's a technical term. No, it's getting out. Second down and five. The five we down by rip. seven. Rip. Rip. Lytle with protection and time and a beautifully floated pass over the middle of Johnson. There's a flag in the backfield. It's first down yardage if it stands up. Marcus Ray on the stop. But well, what touch on that pass. And a personal foul against the Claymores. And that's another big one. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 93 on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Wow. Well, that's Rashid Simmons again, and he had one in the first half as well. And he's got to show a bit more discipline. Rashid Simmons. Down here at the bottom of your screen. I mean, he does everything right. He takes play. Oh, oh that's, that's two ridiculous. steps. That's ridiculous. Two steps. You can't do that. They'll some, call it every time. Some of them are borderline, and some of them are just, you know, obvious. So, the fire threatening here. On the ground they go. Nothing doing. Antoine Carter met by Hess and Mason. Second down and nine. Somebody has to step up and make a play here. I mean, they've been playing too well the first half to come out here and give up an opening drive. This is exactly what this team did on the first time they met. They took the opening kickoff in the second half and drove it and stuffed it down their throat for a score. Well, Danny Werfel 
He sparked many come from behind victories for this Ryan Fire team this season. He's such a positive presence. And he'll throw on second down. Now he'll take off. And he may choose to hang on to this. Nate Dingle gets him. No, they don't touch down. What a run. Dingle had a shot at him. Hess had a shot at him. Hawthorne had a shot at him, but he stayed on his feet. It's not Danny Worth a winner. Is that not what we heard from players, coaches, and everybody? This guy is, is doing whatever it takes for his team to win this football game. What an effort from Danny Werfel. He stayed alive. And now 50-year-old Manfred Bergsmuller can tie it up. His first point after was a real adventure. Let's see what happens this time. Very high snap. And Williams is going to run and run, and he's not going to go far. Marcus Ray said no way, and Galen Hall is furious. A point in this game could be crucial, especially a big game. That point may come back to hurt this team. A high snap means that the Scottish Claymores retain a slender lead. It's 14-13 here in Glasgow. See Michael Mason on the touchdown pass. I think he just loses containment. He shoots the gap. He comes on the inside. Danny Werfel don't have anybody to throw to. When you lose containment like that, you see him going inside. Danny Werfel just makes two guys miss. That's just gut and determination on Danny's part. Yes, Hess and Dingle just Dinged ran each into other. each other. And <laughs> Werfel, such a competitor, such an inspirational leader. Galen Hall calls him the most intelligent quarterback he's ever been around. And the knock against him is his arm strength or lack of it. But he, Galen Hall says his intelligence more than compensates for that. He reads the game so well. Elizovich kicks it off. Gibson will be the return man at the 10. And they fake the handoff. This worked for him in Amsterdam last week. It's not going to work here. The fire strung it out all the way. And you know, Nick, that's exactly what they did. Talk about deja vu. They took the opening kickoff of the second half, Ryan Fire did, and, and stuffed it down their throat. I mean, they came, they took the opening kickoff, started from the, an 80-yard drive, and scored a touchdown. Exactly what they did the first time these two teams met. A great special teams effort from Sasha Geloff, the German defensive back, stopped Gibson in his tracks. And it means that Kevin Daff takes over at his own 14-yard line. Daff finds himself in trouble, and he's down, and there's been a huge momentum shift here in this second half. It looks like Ernie Brown's claiming that one, too. Ernie Brown looks like the hound that went to the Ryan Fires defensive line. These guys, we knew were tough coming into this game, and there's no quitting these guys. They're going to fight, scratch, and claw because they realize the importance of this game. And how about Ernie Brown? We keep talking Marquis Douglas and Derek Ham. We've not heard from them today, but Ernie Brown has two and a half sacks, maybe even three. Trying to sneak through the back door on those guys. Loss of six. They'll go on the ground. Stecker tries to follow his blockers. Nothing doing. Baisley was the first man there. I thought this guy was sick. Well, <laughs> goodness knows. I tell you, this guy's feeling sick right now. Wow. 25 wide drive. Jim Kreiner, a face of concern on the Claymore's coach. Third and 16. What a turnaround there's been here early in this third quarter. It's been all Ryan fire. And the Scottish Claymore's looking for a spark. Can Daft provide it here? He's got a lot of time. Can he find Scott Cooper? No, he can't. Chris Aikens was one on one with Cooper, and Cooper couldn't quite drag it in. Right through his hand. Come on, left side of your screen. Mike Cooper runs a seven cut. It's a seven route, and out, post, corner, right through his hand, had an opportunity. Should've. You gotta make those plays in big games like this. Could have had it, maybe should have had it. But Alonzo Johnson will be getting it at around midfield, unless Ballantyne can really let one go, and they're coming after him. Ballantyne gets off a good kick. 
Fair catch oh. called for a mess made of it again oh. by Johnson. But the fire will take over at the Scotland 47-yard line, and this thing has turned around big time. The cheese on the Scottish cheddar heads might have a slightly sour taste to it at the moment. Scotland were leading 14-7. Their defence seemed to be right on top of the fire offence, but things have turned around in a hurry here in the second half. They're still one point ahead, but the fire trying to level things up. And not much doing there for Antoine Carter as Chris Bain came storming through, the former Atlanta Falcon. That's a great play by the safety. I mean, he reads the run and just comes up and lowers the boom for a one-yard loss. Well, Galen Hall said the real strength of this Claymore defense is its safeties. Marcus Ray, Blaine, one. Michael Murray, and of course, Chris Bain. 692 on one, right? 692. Wonder what that would be. We'll find out. <laughs> Second down. Here we go, Liam! Can Werfel keep the fire moving? Can Liam! he give them the lead? Run! Can the defense hold them? Werfel hit from behind. And the ball is loose and it's recovered by the Claymores. What a huge play. The hit from Chris Ward. You could just sense that the Claymores needed a big play and it came at the right time. Because who knows what would happen if Ryan Fire takes this ball and goes in for another score. And it was John Hess that recovered it, and the Fire don't give up too many turnovers like this. Good pressure, start to break down. Chris Ward again. And it was Hess that fell on it. And Chris Ward making a big play just when his team needed it. That play was large. As players, they're on the sideline right now saying, we needed that. Only their second fumble loss this season. Well, that's a great stat, but I'd hate for it to be on a big game like today. It was close. You might have. And the timing of it, terrible for the Ryan Fire. Perfect for Scotland. Now, can Daft make him play? Can Stecker make him play? Stecker gets past the first guy, is tripped up by the second guy, Kendall Ogle. And that makes it second down and six. I, I, I sense a sense of urgency by the offensive line of the Scotland Claymores. These guys seem to say, hey, guys, we need, to, we need to pick it up. You know, defense is struggling a little bit. We need to get a long drive going here. Well, Aaron Stecker is the man who'll do it for him, but he's been contained so far today as he was in the first meeting, apart from one long touchdown run. What can Stecker do here? Runs into his own men. Flags come in. He will be close to first down yardage. Nick Ferguson coming up from the secondary, but you've got a feeling from where that flag was thrown, this one is not going to be in favor of the Claymores. Obviously, a holding call. Drive killer. 10 yards. And the thing to be smart about a holding penalty, you got to come back and try to get back some of it. Don't try to get it all holding. in one chunk. Offense, number 89, 10 yard penalty. Repeat, second down. Ricky Brady, the tight end. And it's, it's worth revisiting something we said right at the top of the show. Penalties have just oh, been oh, yeah. killing these teams. Yeah. Here we go, here we go. Let's go, twin left, 33, Winston Nod on one. The amazing thing is they've been finding ways to win despite the flags this season, both of them. Set. Second down on 15. Easy, easy. 96, Sally. 96, Sally. Sally. On the ground they go. Stecker finds a big hole, and it was Daft audibilizing at the line of scrimmage. Ferguson eventually on the stop, but gives Stecker 14 yards. 14 big yards, because they were expecting some kind of pass play, and that's one way to get those hounds, I mean, those defensive linemen off you with plays like that. Sally. There's the audible. Hot. And there's the result. So third down and short. Allen is in motion. Stecker the ball carrier. And Stecker is brought down from behind. What a play from Ken Logel. That was just as large as the fumble recovery that was huge. on that play. Ogle was over there like lightning. The man allocated here from the Cleveland Browns. We talked to him yesterday. He told us, my strength is my speed. We just saw it. Came like a bolt of lightning through there to make that play. Nice looking kid. 
hard worker said he needed to work on his tackling, but you know, we didn't buy that, did we, Nick? No, because we certainly didn't need to work on it there. Yeah. They had a guy head and up on the center, and the next guy was John Ballantyne has to kick it away. Yeah. Flags. And the mic was head up on the center, too. And Johnson fields at the 12 yard line. So 7 11 left, and it's becoming a battle of attrition. Well, this is the first game of the weekend later today. Amsterdam take on Berlin. Amsterdam with hopes still of a World Bowl. They need hope Berlin mathematically alive, but effectively out of it. And tomorrow, Frankfurt, who are out of it, the defending champions, have had a very disappointing season. They go to Barcelona. Barcelona need a win to set up an interesting game with Scotland next week. First down at the 12. On the ground they go. Not much doing there for Pepe Pearson. John Hess with the tackle. They might give him three. You know, I'm starting to sense, you know, both of these teams are sensing the urgency of this game. They're starting to pick it up a little bit, and now they're going to go back to basics. Establishing the line of scrimmage, running the football, doing the simple things. Well, you can see the, uh, the intensity of battle. John Hess has virtually lost the, the name off the back of his shirt. No! Ah! Second down. Werfel will throw, and he's looking for Drake, and it's incomplete. Drake on Blackwell is a play that worked well for them in the first meeting between the two teams. Didn't work on that occasion. These two guys remember each other from the first game. He got him on a big play. Kevin Drake coming down. There you go. Looking straight. Good coverage. Got him look like, but he just didn't quit. Good play by Corey Blackwell. Blackwell just got there just in time, didn't he? Absolutely in the nick of time. That's all good cornerbacks do. Well, you know, sometimes we need a little luck, too. <laughs> Third down. Another big play. Werfel goes in looking for Drake again, and Drake had got himself open, but Werfel couldn't find him, and that's three and out for the fire as defences continue to turn the screw here in Scotland. That was a big series. They, they, they stopped them. They stopped them right back. They had to have that series because a long drive would have took a lot out of their sales. This has turned into a good game, well, what particularly did, on defense. What did both these coaches tell us? It's going to be physical. It really is. So Williams kicks it away. Gibson and Sanford both lurking back there. What a long hold. And oh! Williams is blocked. That's a huge play, and it's Chris Bain that recovers it as well. Scotland get a huge break. It was Jabbar Threets that stormed through, and that is huge. That's an absolute big play. Here are the guys coming right through this way, right down the middle of the pipe. These guys have got to protect. They didn't protect. Oh, good. Oh, he just took it right off the feet. That's how you coach it. You know, you have to coach guys to black punts. And it's Threets that got there. And it's a big there. guy. Threets. Boom. 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 Double thump. That's what we called it. Well, Jabbar Threets, who was an undrafted three, free agent in Jacksonville a couple of years ago, then got hurt. Now he's back to full fitness, and now he's showing his potential. Kareem. Go. Set. Now, yeah, what yeah. can Kevin Daft do from yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, the ball at the 13-yard line. Stecker. Come on. Stecker looks to try and work his blockers, and he gets inside the 10 to the five-yard line. Kendall Ogle on the stop. On Second down and two. I think the Claymore's offense, particularly the offensive line, is sensing it. They're sensing that, you know, we need to move the ball. We need to score. We need to do something big on this drive right here and take advantage of that block punt. You'll never get a better opportunity than when you get the ball at your, your opponent's 13. You need to make them count. Daft gives it to Stecker again, and Stecker waits and hesitated, on, and that time hesitation was fatal. Larry Fitzpatrick, who was in camp with Scotland, got in from behind, and they'll lose a couple. You know, we talked about this Claymore defense, but you, you got to take your hats off to this Ryan Fire defense. These guys have really showed up today. They've been playing great defense, particularly on the defensive line, and guess what? The secondary has been quiet. Baisley sends in the signals. For the Ryan Fire, Daft has done his bit. Now, third you're down. You're on, you're on. Oh, you're on. 
Daft has time, goes over the middle, Ricky Brady, touchdown Scotland! That was large. Eight yards to Ricky Brady, the big tight end's fourth touchdown reception of the season. None bigger than that. Well, we've said that the problem that the Ryan Fair defense had was giving up touchdown pass. They have a league leading 16 of them, and that's what takes a lot of that break out of the bend and break, because you don't want to give up touchdown pass. And that blocked punt was indeed huge. Hart with the extra point. Scotland with the eight-point advantage here in the third quarter. They lead it 21 to 3. Ricky Brady, the man circled there, the man who catches this seven-yard touchdown pass from Kevin Daft that makes it 21-13 in flavour of Scotland. But the man who set that up, the man who blocked the punt, Jabbar Threes. Kareem. Yeah, he's named after a That's guy called right. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And who, you know who that guy is. I have is. no idea who that guy the is. The famous guy with the sky hook. Come on. Uh, our basketball. <laughs> I thought, uh, yeah. well, talk about special teams. Jeff Reinbold has seen two big special teams against his team today. The block botched point after touchdown, and now the block punt. Now, Carter, what can he find? He finds a wall of blue, and the ball is out again. Now, have the Claymores recovered that? What a collision. Who's got it? <laughs> that was good, Nick. You asked, what did he find? Oh, it's the Claymores! The Claymores have got it! A massive play. Another special teams disaster for the fire, and it's Saran Stacey, the veteran, who makes it. That was a hit, and somebody is still down. Looks like Damon Gibson. But Jeff Reinbold can barely believe what he's seeing. Here he goes. He's just going right. He gets the, catches the ball. He's going straight upfield and hits the brick wall. What a hit from Damon Gibson it was. And he goes in to try and recover it as well. I can't believe that was Damon Gibson. I guess he was mad because somebody blasted him on his well, Jim, <laughs> on Jim, kickoff return. Jim Kreiner told us, meanwhile, we've got a fire player down there as well. But Gibson is on his feet. It's the fire player that's hurt. But Jeff Reinbold, he's seen all kinds of things going on. But it's Antoine Carter that's down as well, and he took a hit. Look at this hit. It's Antoine Edwards. He just comes in and gets lit up by a what? A wide receiver. I don't think Damon Gibson really believed he did that. Well, Jim Kreiner always called Damon Gibson a real tough guy, but meanwhile, <laughs> Carter. As we see Gibson, Carter is still getting treatment on the field, and the paramedics are on there as well. Bring him over. And the players are being sent away. And Galen Hall, who's seen a lot go wrong for his team today, now has some concerns for his player. What's this? I mean, Scotland must David. really be fired up when you got receivers knocking people out. He really took a shot. I hope he's okay. Well, it's, it's the thing that no player likes to see, isn't it? No, it doesn't. We, we really don't. I mean, when we see a player down, you know, we, we really feel for the guy. And we usually pray and because we all know it's a vicious sport and, you know, it comes with the territory. But I know it happened to me one time. Back in 1993, I was with the Detroit Lions in Minnesota. And, you know, I took a knee to the head and, you know, the precaution, and I lost feeling in my legs for a second or two, and they just did all the precautionary things because you just never know. And it's just part of the game. But in this situation, the uh, the welfare of the player is paramount. And there's a bit of movement I can see down there in the, uh, the hands and the fingers for Carter, which is obviously a very encouraging sign. Good. But he's still, he's still out. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. But it's part of it. And like I said, uh, it can happen to any player on any particular... Well, the, the, good news, the good news is their movement in arms and legs. Yes, he's moving around. He'll be fine. Well, we saw a real bad injury here a couple of weeks ago. Brian Smith, the Scottish Claymore's linebacker. That was also on a special teams play. He 
really ripped up one of his knees and he's gone for the season. And you just hope it's not too serious for Antoine Carter. You see Gaz praying. And Carter's getting on his feet now. That's really good, good to see. Really good to see. And look at that, look at the crowd. Let's go. Everybody, everybody hey, applauding that. Right here. Okay, Jamie, let's go. your report on Antoine Carter as his fellow running back Aaron Stecker just goes and wishes him well. We'll let you know what's going on when we can find out. But the importance of this game cannot be overemphasized. Remember, the winners virtually there, the top two at the end of the 10-game regular season qualify for the World Bowl. Neither of them are there yet. They're close. Another win would virtually put Scotland there. Another win would, would definitely put Ryan there. That is the situation. Scotland need two wins, but one win and a Barcelona loss would absolutely guarantee it. And of course, they finish their campaign in Barcelona next week. But Nick, we're looking at the two best teams in this league. And, you know, this just to me personally, I may think is a preview of the World Bowl that'll be in Frankfurt. Because you're looking at the two best teams by far. But you know, anything can happen. Anything can and has done in this league. We've seen it before. Ooh, now then, up. what can the Claymores do? <laughs> Stecker, not much. Baisley. Alongside Jamie Baisley. <laughs> is continuing on, to make play. plays on, every Kendall. time the ball is snapped. <laughs> Jamie Beasley, I don't know if this guy is sick. Whatever this illness is he has, I want some of it if I'm a player. Here he is, just shooting the gap, coming right through there, making the play like he's been doing all day. He has a bunch of tackles and interceptions. Well, it was all over Stecker in their first meeting, and he's got number 27 zeroed. In this one as well, loss of five, second down, <laughs> Daft throws, has his man, Ricky Brady. They'll pick up seven. Dusty Renfro, the outside linebacker on the stop. That's going to bring up third down and long for Scotland. Twin right. And Jim Kreiner. 33, T Texas. Sends in the play, but what a strange third quarter this has been. All the momentum with the Ryan fire, and suddenly a couple of big plays on special teams, and it's all gone back with Scotland. That's right, turnovers and special teams. They're usually momentum builders in big games. That's a fumble from Werfel as well. Daft has a lot of time. A flag comes in now, he's flushed out, and he looks for Ricky Brady. And Brady will be short, but we've got to check out that flag. Jamie Baisley was there inevitably. Derek Gardner with the assist. Mr. Baisley is really, really a player. And like I gave you that graphic early. He's a baller. He is a baller, there is no argument. The penalty goes against Scotland, but they're well short of uh, first down yardage as well, so they may turn this one down to fire. Or, I suppose you could think, take it and try and push them back and get them out of field goal range. Decision time, really, for the fire defensively. I'd refuse it. I wouldn't give them another shot with guys like Donald Sellers and the way Ron Beatty's been getting open. Although they are in field goal range, where the ball is spotted comfortably. Let's see what they do. Oh, Baisley's down there. Tell you, you talk about guys who can play this football game and you know it's about time we mike a real football player i'm tired of the quarterbacks and all these soft guys <laughs> get a ball to somebody mike somebody who's worth well playing. he's, you know got, what I'm he's got a microphone <laughs> nice, let's go that's the confidence they have in us right the coaches let's go illegal formation scotland they only had six players on the line of scrimmage that's a five-yard penalty. We will repeat, third down. Well, I don't know if that's a good penalty for Ryan Fire or not. <laughs> it gives Daff another shot, and he's been hot. Well, Pete Kuharchek, the defensive coordinator whose philosophy it is, give him soft yards, but don't give him big plays. He can only stand and watch now as Scotland get another chance on third down, and Daft goes upstairs for Damon Gibson, and he's picked off in the end zone. Nick Ferguson. Absolutely, and you know, we've talked about that this being the Achilles heel of the defense. They gave up a touchdown pass earlier, but here they go, making a pick in the end zone. That is a big play. Ferguson second of the season. Here we got Donald Sellers right there in on slot. And of course, Nick Ferguson all the way back there in the deep. But this is Damon Gibson. He runs a post corner here, but the free safety makes a great play on the football. Anytime you pick a ball off in the end zone, that's a big play. They just took three points off the, off the board, Nick. Exactly. No points. Well, we talked about 
Scotland's defence, but Ryan Fire's defence is making plays today, including, as you say, that Achilles heel, the secondary. Now, what can Werfel do? They start off on the ground, just a couple for Pepe Pearson, Phil Glover on the stop, and you have to think that Pearson is going to be carrying the load here after Carter went off earlier. Yes, he is, and that's a good guy to do it because he's a good running back. Looking at this guy on film, he's been doing a lot of things well. He can catch the ball also coming out of the backfield. He presents a problem anytime you have a guy that can do that. Hold it, though. Rip it! Second down and eight. Fake and then Werfel is just clobbered as he looks for Kendrick Nord and that thing was hanging in the air and it was broken up but Werfel was just thumped by Jabbar Threets. That's a great play by the cornerback Dewan Hawthorne. He went up for the ball, didn't even give the official a chance to give him a PI, a pass interference. And that ball was hanging as well and there was no chance for Kendrick Nord to come down with it. And meanwhile Werfel paid the price at the other end. But you know, Dewan Hawthorne, you know, he's Zero, leading the nine. lead. Zen, 50, burst on one, right? You got a Tank. burst call coming Tank. in. Back to Dewan Hawthorne. He has a shot to make the squad in Dallas there with Dion go. being gone. And they need this, the fire. They go with their snug package to the right. Three wide receivers and a flag comes in, and that's a delay of game. Is it right? Delay of game, Ryan. And that is just third down. huge. For the Ryan Fire. You go from third and seven and eight. Two, what about the third and three under? 13. Number now you just heard Galen Hall he say we're gonna do something under. under. This is the best kind of route you can do. You you clear Something out and send him. someone underneath. You got him. You're gonna take this guy. Or him. They no. survey with the same formation. The three wideouts no. to the top no. of the screen. Werfel looks. Goes over the middle, has a man. Well, short of first down yardage, it's a fumble as well, or are they going to rule it incomplete? It I was Jabbar Threets in the thick of it again, and they're still fighting for that ball. And everybody's involved in that. And the Scottish Claymore's defence turns the screw even more. I think Kendrick Nor Kendrick Nor had possession of this ball. Looks like a fumble to me. Well, that's the way the officials have seen it. Kendrick Nord ought to be at the top of your field, top of your screen right here. There he goes. He yeah, catch, oh, both feet down. Both feet looked like he had control, and they were down. And it's Threets that comes up with it, and that's spotted at the eight. This is a game of big plays, and we're starting to see it from the Claymore defense. And most of them are going Scotland's way. First down. Can they twist the knife here? Daft hands it off. Stecker, patient. Nowhere to go. Second down. Even on that play previously. That's how you feel it. Danny Werfel was saying, block him, or maybe block him. Heck, Danny didn't know who was coming. <laughs> well, they lost one fumble all season. Eight games, the Ryan Fire. They've lost two here in three quarters of play. Set. Blue 88. Counter, Kendall, you. Easy, easy. Round 96. Second down. Round 96. Hot. Goes back on the ground again. And again, patience. And again, nothing much doing there for Aaron Stecker. That's going to bring up third down. Dusty Pierce on the stop. But after the interception last time they had the ball, maybe they're thinking safety first and conservative here. Just get some points. Just get some points. Don't want to mess up this opportunity. We got to put something on the board because I have a sense that this is going to be a close game. It's going to come down to the wire because we know Ryan Fire scores a lot of points in the fourth quarter. As do the Claymores. Well, it's an eight point lead as the third quarter ticks away. A third quarter that had a bit of everything. We had a missed extra point. We had a couple of th fumbles. We had a block punt and we had an interception as well. A bit of everything. Welcome back to Scotland. Nick Halling with Tim Mackay in the booth. The story so far, Scotland 21-13 ahead of Ryan Fire. Guess what? Both these teams are fourth quarter teams, so something's got to give right now. Something has to give, but if you look at the numbers, Ryan sc scores a lot more. But then again, they're going against a defense that give up a lot less. 
So what happens here? The first play of this fourth quarter is a third down and goal. Kevin Daft looks and it's batted down. So that will send on the he had goal sellers. unit. He had Sellers. Sellers was open on the slant. Couldn't find him. Jamie Baisley was the man that batted it down. So that sends in another one of the Englishmen that plays for the Scottish Claymores, Rob Hart, the kicker, who has a long of 42 this season and has made five of seven. This a 23-yarder. It'll put some daylight between these two teams. It's on its way. It's certainly got the distance. It's got the accuracy too. And it now means early in the fourth quarter here that the Ryan Fire find themselves 11 points adrift. Well, when you have an off offensive output of Ryan Fire, al although be it without Jane, Jeff Ogden, they still score a lot of points. And, you know, we said the stand-in had to step up. Which one of these guys is going to step up big? I mean, Alonzo has played a little bit better. But he needs to come up and make a bigger play. I'm talking about six points. You need to do something like that. Bottom line, though, Tim, this game is not even close to being over yet, is it? Oh, it's not even close. I mean, you could just smell the fact that, you know, Ryan Fire feel like, hey, guys, we can win this football game. It's just coming all the way across the field right over in this booth. Well, Jeff Reinbold, the defensive backs coach and the special teams miscues, has had a very frustrating afternoon. A couple of muff punts, a missed extra point, a blocked punt, a fumble lost on a kickoff return. They also had an extra point that bounced in off the crossbar as well. And I think special teams will be a priority next week in Dusseldorf. Well, we knew they would have problems on special teams, you know, without having Jeff Ogden, but... We didn't know they'd have these well, kind of miscues. That's been nothing to do with open <laughs> block punts and missed extra points. I mean, that's nothing to do with a missing wide receiver oh, who can return. You're absolutely right. Well, Steve Fisher is now back there with Pepe Pearson as they continue to ring the changes on their returners. And it's Fisher that fields at the 10 and gets past the first wave. And Fisher, a defensive back, gets it past the 40-yard line. Chris Bain eventually pushing him out of bounds, and Fisher, who's not had a kickoff return this season, might be getting a few more after that. And he's given Danny Werfel something to play with. Yes, he has. Number 21. Here we go, baby, it's up. We got 690 all hitch if they're pressing. Stay. That was big. Okay, zero, 690 all hitch on one, right? All hitch, that's gonna be something quick. Let's see if the corner's up to the task. Well, both corners playing it very soft on first down. Rip! Rip, 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 blue! Blue! Werfel goes for Drake. Drake working Blackwell. They'll pick up nine yards. Blackwell was standing a good eight yards off Drake. Yeah, we talked about this matchup right here. Kevin Drake and Corey Blackwell. It's going to be a matchup, you know. Talking to Corey during the week, he said he's up to the challenge. And he's looking forward to it. Well, the philosophy certainly there was just keep everything in front of you. As far as the Claymores are concerned defensively. And it gained them nine yards, the fire. What do they do on second now? Back on the ground. Nothing doing for Pepe Pearson. Penetration from Matt Finkis. That's a, a loss of play. four. That's a great play by the linebacker on that play. Here you pick up nine yards on the first down. Then you come back and get him up for a loss. Here he is on the corner right here. Here we go. He, he just reads it. One snug spin, 70 feet drive. And makes a great play. And Pearson's had a quiet afternoon. Seven carries, 17 yards. No chance for him there. Third down no. and five. Here we go. The pressure building. Five -oh, five -oh. Here in Glasgow. No. No. And Werfel. Drops, has time, steps up, is hit, goes down, ball loose, straight into the hands of one of the big offensive linemen. They got a lucky break there. The fire, Dan Collins reacting fastest of all. You can just sense a sense of urgency. Looks look like Rashid. Look like Rashid Simmons down. Well, let's see who forced the pressure there again. Werfel just found himself with nowhere to go. The Hounds of Scotland are barking again. Here he is, nowhere to go. Guys, bodies flying all over the place. What a very fortunate hop he got. You know, we talk about that football, 
it hops and pops all over the place, and they were very fortunate that it popped in the line. Australian fans of Dan Collins, who's a nephew of Matt Kavanaugh, by the way, Baltimore's offensive coordinator, so uh, the bloodlines are good. That's a good stand by the Scotland Claymore defense after giving up nine yards on the pass completion on first down. So it sends out the punting unit. It's still fourth and three. No sign that they're going to go for that. So Williams will kick to Gibson. Long hold at the line. Plus you knew that was for. Well, yeah, absolutely. Williams <laughs> got it off, and it's a good kick that's going to sail into the end zone. For the a flag coming in late, and meanwhile there's all kinds of nonsense going on between Marcus Ray and Kendall Ogle, I think. That all seems to have been resolved. Well, Let's you check out what this thing's all about. Well, you knew why they were holding that snap, to get somebody to do something silly. I don't know if he did do anything silly because they knew they'd have been paying into that uh, penalty pot. And the pot is up to 60 pounds. <laughs> yeah, and Rashid Simmons, I think, has to pay all of that. How much is that in American dollars? Oh, I wouldn't know because <laughs> we're talking real money here. We're talking pounds. A hundred bucks. Okay. Okay, I'll let you go. I'll let it, yeah, roughly. I'll tell you, somebody's going to be throwing some more money in that pot after this because that one's going against the Claymores. Well, you get the sense that you know the claymores are realizing that this game is very important and that they're playing these guys defensively realize that they didn't play well the second half last time and they picked it up a lot even though they've given up nine yards of holding on the receiving team number 40 during the kick Early 10 start. yard penalty first down <laughs> even though they well there is the hold from tava so that return He's going to be pushed even further back to the 10-yard line, but it's Scotland with the lead. Twelve twenty-eight left in the ball game here in Glasgow. A game that's been called by many a World Bowl eliminator. The winner here almost certainly through. A very well-played game, you know. I mean, these guys, without this guy right here, Mr. Jeff Ogden, I mean, it really hurts this team not having him, but... You know, we said somebody had to step up, and, and nobody really did it. We're looking at the, the statistics. Alonzo, 49 yards. Drake, only 40 yards. And that's why the Fire find themselves 11 points adrift, and they need a defensive stand here. Marcus Crandall back in the game. Aaron Stecker runs into a bunch of trouble. Kendall Ogle was there first. And they'll lose a yard, so second down and 11. Stecker's had a tough day today. He's been contained pretty well by this fire front seven. Yeah, absolutely. We said it's the strength of this ball, this ball club. Is that front seven, and they've been playing an admirable job. The two linebackers have been very active, and they've been making plays. Stecker, 51 yards on 20 carries. Not the kind of productivity he's used to. Second and 11. Second and long, Crandall will throw. Come on, and hit the gun. They find a receiver, the they find hit, hit, Sellers. Are they going to rule it a catch? Yes, they are. Despite the fire saying it took a hop. They can, they can plead and beg, but that was the catch right there. Sellers knows it. And that's going to make it third down and one. Now let's watch the offense and defensive line on this play. Because that's going to be the difference in this one yard. Well, Sellers goes wide right, Gibson left. Set, Tremaine Allen is in the game, the H back. He goes in motion. Hot. Flags come in in the defensive backfield and Crandall is hit, but that could all be academic. Did we see another yellow handkerchief? Yet another. <laughs> We've had a few of those this afternoon. Delay of game, offense, five yard penalty remains third down and we've seen a lot of flags that you feel just aren't necessary especially that one i mean you go from third and one and two to third and seven right. i mean west and not on one that's bad what was that call marcus crandall sent in country and western Third, <laughs> 435. i dread to think what this is going to be on third down Crandall will throw over the middle. Looks for Sellers. Come on, get there. Let's go. Come on. They won't be going the country and western route again. 
He should have you out, Frog. Well, that ball hit Sellers in the hand. He should have caught that football. This is a big game, and you needed that. It was there. there Another tough is. catch. He's right there in the middle. Just going to go right down there and sit. Right in the spot. He should have caught that Let's ball and hit him in the hand. Game. In games like this, you have to catch those balls. So Steve Fisher, the return man, who's been pressed into service because of injuries elsewhere. Ballantyne will kick it away. Fisher had a pretty good kickoff return last time. They're coming after Ballantyne. And there's a shot at a return here. And Fisher looks and waits. And that smart play from Fisher, who worked his blockers. And where's this guy been hiding? All the way to the 17-yard line. Ray eventually pushed him out of bounds. Where has this guy been on special teams all season? I don't know. We said stand-ins had to step up, but I don't even think this guy was qualified as a stand-in. Who is this Fisher guy? I mean, he outkicks his coverage. There he is. Look at the patience here. Patience. Just picks his lane and runs through. Of course, he's not going to let a kicker get him. No, safety, that's okay. But Steve Fisher, a defensive back, played his college ball at North Carolina, had a good kickoff return. Now he's had a very good punt return to the 18-yard line Here we go, of the blue. Scottish Claymores, and it's put the fire back in blue. this ball game, potentially. Yeah. Werfel goes upstairs for Drake. Flags, touchdown. Yeah, and it's passing. Wow. Kevin Drake silences the crowd wow. for the second time. Wow. If it stands up. We have a game. And I think it's going to be pass interference on this call. I think you may be right. It's not been called yet. Drake has started celebrating. But let's see. How about Kevin Drake? It's a touchdown. Two flags, both against Scotland. And of course it will be refused. So, Looks like... Pass interference, number 20 on the defense. That's that cool penalty down. is declined. Holding, number 53 on the defense. That penalty is declined. Touchdown is good. Kevin Drake, who was with the Scottish Claymores last season, who was not protected by them, who got two touchdowns against them four weeks ago, adds another two here. It is game on in Glasgow. How about Kevin Drake? We said somebody had to step up, and this guy has stepped up. Two touchdown passes. Set up by a special teams play from a, another guy who had to step up, Steve Ab Fisher. Absolutely, whoever he may have been. And now they go for two points. And they're two for two on the season. And Werfel, that calm leader. Good up, Blue! Pulling the strings Blue. for this offense. <laughs> the throw is on its way. And the two-point conversion to Kendrick Nord is good. And the fire are within three. You have to sense that this game is not over. We know that Ryan Fire scores points in the fourth quarter. They, there is absolutely no quit in these guys. Here's Kevin Drake on Corey Taylor. Just goes down the field. And it's, just a, it's just a battle for the ball. And Drake is just out fighting these guys for the ball. I think, I think he has a lot of confidence. And here's the two-pointer to Kendrick Nord on Hawthorne. Same deal. Same deal. They're just absolutely challenging these corners. They're going out there telling their coach, hey, coach, we want to go after these guys. Well, we talked to Danny Werfel yesterday. He said, we found ourselves behind in games so often, but there's no sense of panic here. We always feel we can get back into it. And Galen Hall then said, the reason we keep coming back and winning games is because of the quarterback. Yes, he did. Danny, Wer Wer Danny Werfel said, yes, we don't have any new Rockney speeches and guys sitting up there yelling. We just concentrate and do what we do, and that's score touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Well, they did it again there. A special teams play, a touchdown pass to Drake, a two-point conversion. Ten minutes left in this ball game, and just three points in it. Sanford and Gibson wait. Lezovic with the kick. Sanford fields at the eight. Now, can he come up with a return? He had one last week, and he's got another good one here. Runs into Matthew Hickel, and then is down at the 40-yard line. That was Lars. They needed field position. They got a good return by Salacio Sanford, and now it's up to this offense. Oh, both these teams making some special teams plays here this afternoon. 
Turok King, what? Turok King, what? Oh, These special teams missed cues in that third quarter that have really hurt the Ryan Fire. It really has. And these guys got to realize, hey, this is a big game, and there's no so quit in Ryan King, Fire. 97 yeah, quit. stretch on one. Now, this is significant. With the chips down, they take Marcus Crandall out of the game Turok, and go with Ray Kevin Ray. Daft, Blue who they think Ray is the Ray safer Hunt. pair of hands. There's a safe pair of hands right there, Aaron Stecker, nothing doing for Stecker, strung out all the way, Baisley on the stop for the thousandth time today, it seems. Baller, player, middle linebacker, ill, sick, whatever you want to say about go. this guy. Who wants it? That's right. Let's and that's go. what you do Deuce when you play middle linebacker. You can tell we got the right guy mic'd in this game. This guy's Let's got slide. me fired Let's. up. They say he's a little Light. bit too slow and a little bit too small to play in the NFL, but he just makes plays every time he steps on the field. Second down now, Daft. Incomplete. The pressure was on. Daft couldn't find anybody. Now it's third and long. You're talking about stepping up, huh? When we talked about the secondaries of these two teams, that one gave up touchdown pass and the other ones didn't. Well, it looked like it's been the opposite this day, today. Looked like the Claymores have given up the touchdown passes. Well, the pocket was collapsing on Kevin Daft here. Looked like he didn't want to throw that ball. Ooh, well, he better want to throw it here. It's third down. They found Stecker, but Stecker's got an awful lot of work to do. And Dusty Pierce can't get him. But eventually, no, Stecker somehow spins away from all those guys and will pick up two yards. Mallard eventually on the stop. He left four fire defenders on the floor but couldn't pull off the miracle. That was a big series for the Ryan Fire defense. They did what they had to do. They came down, they scored off a big, big pump return, and now they had to come out on this next defensive series and get them three and out, and that's exactly what they did. They got the Claymores punting, so now they have a chance. They're right back in this ball game. They just keep doing what they're doing. And look just who's going to be getting his hands on the ball next. This guy, Steve Fisher. <laughs> the guy from nowhere. Fielded with a fair catch at the 20 yard line. So, 8 19 left in what's become a finely balanced ball game. Here. Welcome back to Glasgow. Nick Halling with Tim McKaya in a game that's been called a World Bowl dress rehearsal. But it's a game that both teams need to win. The Scottish Claymores have the edge. Ryan Fire have the momentum at the moment. Eight minutes left. Three points in it. The fire with the ball. And they go on the ground. Pearson straight up the middle. Rashid Simmons with the stop. Second down and five. I mean, we have ourselves a ball game. These guys are playing great football right now. And it's up to this defense. I'm looking at the clay board. They on one, one right. and everything. They need to step up big and get three and out and mimic what Ryan Fire did in the last series. And amazingly, Antoine Carter is back yeah. in the ball game. And Carter gets the carry here. Nothing doing for him on that occasion. Noel Scarlett said, forget that. And Carter, who was almost carried off the field after that special team hit, showing tremendous courage coming back because the team need it. And you said, guys have got to step up for the fire. Because you got to understand the player's psyche. Players in big games want to be out there. They want to be a part of success. And they'll do whatever it takes to get out there and be a part of that. And hats off to Antoine Carter because he really took a shot. I thought he was done for the game. Not so. Steve Fisher has stepped up. Kevin Drake has stepped up. Antoine Carter has stepped up. Here we go, 50. He's going to step up here on third and you four for the fire. Blue. Blue. Werfel will throw. Incomplete. Close, but not good enough. Alonzo Johnson Rick. couldn't drag it in. So they did exactly what they needed to do. Three and out. So now we got the defensive battle. That's what we want. But the thing about it is, we're surprisingly, is that Ryan Fire's defense is coming up to the task. Well, they've stepped up big time today. Big time. Including a secondary that you were critical of, having watched them on film. Absolutely were. And they deserve the criticism. But not today. Williams will kick it away. They still have those two return men back. And it's going to be Gibson. What a great kick from Rodney Williams. All the way back to the 20. Gibson is looking for somewhere to go. 
and he's still on his feet and he's dancing around and still still on his feet and now the ball is loose is it it's a fumble it's a fumble well would you believe that gibson tried to do too much and gave it up well mistakes were hurting the fire they hurt the claymores there there he is he's doing a lot of great things he's moving he's darting he's making guys miss but usually when you do that you're in a lot of traffic and look at that jamie baisley is the man that falls on the ball just poked it out of it and there's rodney williams the punter whose great punt started all that celebrating there's the ball there's baisley there's the turnover there's the big play on special teams the fire needed Carter cuts back, flags it down. They'll give him six. Let's wait for that flag. Another penalty on Ryan Fire's offense. Prior to the snap, false start, number 66 on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. That hurt. That hurt. It's hurt them all season. Somehow they find a way to overcome it. Three right. And Collins, who recovered that fumble earlier in the ball game, but has been flagged a couple of times as well. First down and 15. Can the fire capitalize on the special team's mistake from the Claymores? Merle Moore, the defensive coordinator, pacing the sidelines for Scotland. What can his group do now? They've contained Werfel, but this is a guy, You're going that, out running as the you path. said, he always seems to find a way to get it done. No, no, you got him. Blue! First down on 15. Blue! Carter is in motion out of the backfield. Werfel feels the pressure. Gets rid of it, looks for Johnson. All kinds of contact in the backfield and flags everywhere. Johnson almost had the shirt taken off his back. Wow. I'm not believing what I'm seeing in this Scottish Claymore secondary. I mean, this is a big game, and I'm getting pass interference calls. You're getting guys running into guys. You get guys not making plays. It seems like the Claymores are playing like the Ryan Fire secondary. Number 40, the ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Oh, Hurley Tarver first down. is assessed. Hurley Tarver here should be coming up here on the right side of your screen. I mean, he's covered good technique so far, but now he's panicking. He's, he doesn't know where the ball is. So when you don't know where the ball is, you do those kind of things. So first down, Carter runs into a wall of trouble. Tom Tovo. The defensive tackle was the first man there. Day. And they need a stand here defensively, the yes. Claymores. And if they're going to get it, it's going to have to be with this front seven. This front seven is going to have to up. step it Zero, up. Zero, snug, zen, 50, corner. Look at, those, one, right? at those penalties. Scotland in Run double figures now. And then come back in. Watch Kevin Drake at the bottom, post corner. Second down and long. Drake is in motion. Werfel can't get rid of it. He's hit. He's flat. Chris Bain, the safety man, blasting through from the secondary. And Bain is hurt. That was a big play. It was a huge play. But and Bain has paid the price. He's got all kind of blitz coming up. Early Tarver was in the mix of it as well. Bain, meanwhile, is still down. My contact before throwing the pass. So that's confirmation that it's sack number five on Danny Werfel. Matt Lytle had a sack earlier as well. In fact, may have had a couple. So Merles Moore's defense is standing up pretty well to the challenge so far. It's now third and long. Yeah, they have to finish this game. They've been playing well, particularly the first half defensively. They just have to finish it now. You got five minutes, 23 seconds left to go in this ball game, and they have to come up with more big plays. 
Look like the defensive line has stepped it up a little bit here. Man, well, starting to put more pressure. Meanwhile, here's the guys you never like to see on the field of play, the paramedics. And let's hope this is just precautionary. Well, we saw the injury to Antoine Carter earlier. He made a full recovery. They're looking at Bain's knee. And the intensity of this game is such that guys are just throwing caution to the wind. You know, I just sensed it coming into this game that, you know, it was going to be a doozy. It was going to be a good game. You had two defenses that play well. And any time you got two defenses that play well, you're going to have a great football game. And this has been a good one. There's been some great play on defense, some big plays on offense, mistakes on special teams. A bit of everything today. And like I said, I'm really surprised at the way that the secondary of the Claymores is playing versus the Ryan Fire. I mean, Ryan Fire, you know, they've given up 26 some odd yard dead last in the league. And you know, the, Clay the Claymores are pretty stout, number one in the league against the pass. And these guys have been giving up big plays, pass interference calls, and Ryan Fire secondary has been solid. Well, it's good to see that the stretcher has been waved off, and Chris Bain is going to walk off under his own steam. Meanwhile, some surgery on the other sideline, and they need some surgery. Just 14 sacks through the first eight games, seven more today. Danny Werfel and Matt Lytle earlier really paying the price, and uh, Chris Bain limping off very slowly. They had, they had what they wanted in Drake on the seven round, which is the post corner. I think they like Drake when running that route because he does it so well. So third down, call it 19. Line's got the him. fire down Blue. by three. Blue. Drake in motion. The pressure comes. It's unloaded in the direction of the German, Kai Eric Lick, who juggles and can't pull it in. Great effort from the German, just coming up short. Well, they're really taking their shots at this Claymore secondary right now. I mean, they sense them hanging. And when you're the offensive coordinator and you sense that these guys aren't making plays, you're going to keep taking shots. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're taking shots at these guys. I mean, he really didn't have time to throw the ball, but he still took his shot and almost made a circus catch by the German Kai Lack. And it sends out the kicker, Peter Elizovic, who's got to attempt a 39-yarder. He's only been with the team a couple of weeks. He was traded here from Barcelona. Elezovic gets it off, and it we is. are tied up. With less than five minutes remaining, it's another one of those second quarter, second half comebacks from the Ryan Fire. They do not quit. They don't have Newt Rockney speeches. They just keep doing what they're doing. That's what Danny Werfel told us in our meeting yesterday, and that's exactly what they're doing. No panic. Knock me over. And there were 11 points adrift, remember? And they've leveled the it up. The also protected on extra point field goal, right? Yeah. Galen, so they has, Galen has been on the, the officials all yeah, afternoon. I know, I know, He's definitely know, been know, putting a bug in their ear all year they long. He knows that his right? guys are getting yeah, held. And you know, a good coach is going to fight for you. He's always going to put a bug in that official's ear so they can hey, keep guys, an eye on those guys. Let's go, Justin. Chris Bain getting some treatment to the knee. We'll bring you a report on that when we, when we have it. Meanwhile, we're all knotted up here. Scotland, who never trailed in this ball game, have let slip an 11-point lead here in the fourth quarter. Vince Alcaldi, the offensive coordinator, knows he's got to find something soon. Well, we said these guys had to break this bendable defense, and, and they just didn't do it. They haven't executed, and they weren't patient enough to bend it. I mean, they made it bend a, a, a series or two, but then they'd stop. Sanford at the 12. And in for another return. Yes, Sanford stays on his feet and dances around and gets past the 40 to the 42-yard line. Well, we sold it at the top of the program as a possible World Bowl dress rehearsal. The World Bowl itself will be on June the 25th in Frankfurt, Germany at the Vault Stadion. Yes, it's on Fox Sports if you're watching in America. It's on Sky Sports if you're watching in England. And it's on Sat 1 if you're in Germany. It's going to be seen all around the world.
I'll be there. You'll be watching, won't you? I'll but be you watching. wish you were there. I wish I was there. Round 25. Round 25. Huh? First down. Ball. They find Scott Cooper, who makes a catch on his knees. Wow. That was Lord. Let's go. That's a great Let's catch. Go, Let's go. Here we go. Come on. Not time. Here we so go. Cooper Dude, makes check. the catch. The pressure on and the Ryan fire. Such a strong second half team, as you can see. They're holding Scotland here as well defensively. They've been nowhere near as productive in this second half. And Kevin Daff still in at quarterback. Stecker, who's had difficulties today, continues to have difficulties. Maybe a yard. He was strung out by Baisley and Mallard. Third down, Scotland. This is the big play. Third down. Can you move the ball? Can you get off the field? Is he the MVP of the ball game so far? As far as I'm Let's concerned, go. Third down. it's not even close. Let's go. Jamie Baisley is definitely Jet, two my MVP. Press, ready? Let's go. Watch hard count. Left, left, left. Good job, guys, wiring up a real player. <laughs> Cooper, left. Sellers, who's been quiet. Right. Ooh, Allen up. goes in motion. Snell in the backfield. Pump fake. Over the middle. Ricky Brady makes the catch. First down, Scotland. Brady, the go-to guy, tackled by Dusty Pierce. Ricky Brady's eighth catch of the ball game. That was a big one. Yes, it was. Looked like Mr. Brady is uh, Kevin Dabb's security blanket. I mean, all he does is just come down here, releases, stops, catch, first down. The pressure off temporarily. The ball at the 39-yard line of the fire. On the ground they go. Ben Snell runs into trouble. Snell was making positive yardage in the first half. Now he's finding it tough against this Ryan front. That Ryan front, front, front seven with those linebackers, Jamie Baisley and company. Boy, these guys are playing hard-nosed football. They're playing so well that they can't even take a shot at the Here we secondary. Go. I got it. Let's go. We're gonna go straight, they're bending, right? but they're certainly not breaking today. And Kevin Daft, the safe pair of hands, stays in at quarterback. Set. Blue 88. Blue 88. Hunt. And he'll throw. And he has a man, Stecker, and Stecker dances his way past tacklers and dives close to first down yardage. And he, they've given it to him, 11 yards, Mallard on the stop. If Stecker doesn't break that first tackle, it's third and long. Instead, it's first down. But you, but you know, you're dealing with Aaron Stecker. Stecker, there he is in the backfield, screams on to slow this pass rush down. He makes one guy miss. Oh. Good move by Aaron Stecker. This guy's a player. Every time I see this guy, I think of Dalton Hilliard. This guy is built low to the ground, and, that takes and he us, makes plays. That takes us to the two-minute warning. The game knotted up at 24 apiece, but Scotland driving ever closer. Two minutes left in what's been a gripping ball game here at Hamden Park in Glasgow. The Scottish Claymores were leading 24-13. The fire have levelled it up, 24 apiece. But now Kevin Daft and the Scottish Claymores have driven close to field goal range. They have first down at the fire 27. Here we go, listen up. Hey, let's go. We're going to go straight right, 90 zone on one. And if ever this Ryan Fire defence needed a stand, it's now. Cooper left. Sellers right. They go on the ground. Stecker, nothing doing. Nothing. Absolute. Bastian Lano, the rookie German, read it all the way. A guy that Galen Hall says is getting better week after week. This front seven is outstanding. These guys are coming after the quarterback. They're doing whatever it takes. They have to win the line of scrimmage, and they've been doing that from day one. And this guy comes in from the Aschaffenburg Stallions in the German Bundesliga. And he's making a contribution as well. And that was large. Now they are second and 13, 14 yards. That was a big one. Guys have got to step up, just as you said. And this defense has really stepped up. If I was looking at it, you would think, statistically, Ryan Fire would be the better defense. Just looking at this game. But statistically, they're not. They're last in a lot of categories and at the bottom. But today, they've really stepped it up. They have. Going right, yeah. Jeff Ryan Bold conferring with Galen Hall. 152 left. 
right now. It's a 47-yard field goal. Rob Hart's career long is 42. They'd like to get him some more. Daft will throw. Pressure comes. Daft has to just get rid of it. And he's lucky that thing dropped incomplete. And so it's third down and long. The pressure was on. Daft just took the smart decision and threw it away. But that ball was hanging in the air for a while. Yes, it was. I mean, he's fortunate it wasn't picked off. I think they had a miss up between he and Sellers on the route. Well, Sellers has been. 33, Winston Nod on one. Sellers has been his go to guy since he joined this team. He is lined up in the slot. Cooper is the wide out, top of the screen. Third and long. Daft with time. Over the middle, and Sellers can't get hold of it. Steve Fisher put a hand in there. How about Steve Fisher? This is a great play. If he don't make this play, Sellers is still running. Slot guy, here he is, right here. Great play. He just watching the quarterback, leaves his feet, sticks a paw out there, and just tips it away. That is a big play. It stopped a first down. It sends Rob Hart out, and Hart will attempt a 48-yard kick. Aikens! Aikens! And a timeout has been taken by the fire. They're going to let Rob Hart stew on it. Wow. Wow. Well, what pressure well, on the Englishman. What a game, Nick. This game is big. I mean, who is this Steve Fisher guy? I mean, we said stand-ins had to step up, but I don't think he was. Did we consider him a stand-in? He was not considered. <laughs> and it may yet come down to the boot of an Englishman. Rob Hart, the former London monarch who kicked for Murray State in Kentucky, where he said nobody could understand a word of him. The barefoot kicker with a career long in this league of 42 yards, attempting a 48-yarder here. And flags everywhere. Willie Tate, the holder, is pointing in the direction of the fire. Can you believe the flags we've had in this ball game? Well, if this one's against the fire, it certainly helps the, uh, the kicking game. Yes, it does. But I'm wondering if it was encroachment. Well, if it's against the claim, it's a killer. The Neutral zone infraction on number 71 on the defense. Five yard well, that's penalty. Derek Ham. Uh, that, does that help? Does that help? That was a major brain blow. I tell you. Now you just took five yards off of the attempt. And Derek Ham, who's had nine sacks this season, the man from Washington, still arguing. But a 48-yarder has become a 43-yarder for Rob Hart. It would still be a career Come long. Inside, him. And an Englishman is carrying the hopes of Scotland on his shoulders now. It's on its way. It's no good. It drifted agonizingly wide. Boy. What a game. And with 1.38 left, the Ryan Fire are going to get this ball in pretty good field position. Jim Kreiner can hardly believe it. I bet Derek Ham's the most relieved man in this stadium right now. Yes, he is. Now it's up to the Claymore defense to step up again. Or for Danny Werfel, who's made so many plays for this Ryan Fire team this season. Can he conjure up another drive? They've burned a couple of timeouts. That could hurt them. It's time for the number one quarterback in the league to test the number one defense in the league. Werfel throws. He finds Drake. Drake is run out of bounds after a pickup of five. Corey Blackwell. That's the matchup. That's the matchup they want. Drake on Corey Blackwell. I think Kevin Drake feels like he can get this guy. And Corey's just going to have to step up to the challenge and make plays. Here we go. Ram! Werfel in control of the situation. Second down. Gets hit. Thumped Noel Scarlett. Huge play from the Scottish defense. Very large play. No, 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 no L is what the guys were telling him about in the, in the, in the meeting room the other day. Noel Scarlett, there he is. He just beats this guy. 
dives right on the Danny Werfel. That's nothing the quarterback can do when the guy just beats his guy like that. And one on one. The third timeout taken, and the man from the Patriots has put the fire in a deep hole. Third and long. And now the pressure really on Danny Werfel. You can just sense the hounds barking. Look at Noel Scarlett. He's fired up out there. Barking at the guys, getting them all fired up. An incompletion here or a failure to get the third down, and suddenly the Claymores get the ball back with some time. And maybe they get a big punt return. Yeah, and like you got the stutter up the seam. This Take game is time. on a knife edge. Here we go. Zero snugs in. 50 go. I'm on it. They need to get, get, it, you gotta get the first. to the 43-yard line. They're at the 30. Then they've got to you think about it. getting in the field goal range. They're going to try to attack you the seams. Drake is in motion. Werfel feels the heat, gets away. And they stay with him and bring him down again, Rashid Simmons, who had a couple of personal fouls earlier in the game makes amends yes he did great play by the defensive line these hounds are really barking now they can sense it they sense that this game is tight and that they need to step it up and they are stepping up right now big jim tom sula's group has come up with nine sacks today in the previous eight games the fire had given up 14. wow and it means the Claymores will have the ball back again. Is there going to be late drama here in Scotland? Can they get into field goal range? Salatio Sanford and Damon Gibson are back. This one's lived up to its billing, Tim. Yes, it did. I sense it coming in. You got the two best teams in the league playing. You kind of hope this is the World Bowl as well, because these two teams will put on a show in Frankfurt. Absolutely. Williams got off a great kick earlier. He had one blocked earlier as well. So who knows what's coming now? We know Steve Fisher with Ryan Fire, you know, had a big return. Hopefully the Claymores can get one, you think? I'm sure they're banking on it. Well, meanwhile, the officials are Thank you. conferring. They seem happy enough. We can now get on. Scotland still with the two returners. Gibson and Sanford waiting at their own 30. No time for a mistake now. Williams gets off a great kick. Wow. Sanford fields at his own 17. Can he work a return? He gets past the first guy. He gets past Matthew Hickel. He's still on his feet. Gets past Williams. He's still going. It's a foot race now. Aikens, but a match-winning play, surely, from Silicio Sanford. Absolutely. We talked to the guy all week long. I was hanging out with him. He said, T-Mac, I'm going to make a play that's going to be the difference in this game. And, and he absolutely positively did it. There he is catching the ball when the punter out kicks his, 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 uh, his coverage. And this is just all Silicio Sanford. This guy is a talent. He went 95 yards last week. Here he is, busting it up the sideline, gutting it out. It's a foot race. Touchdown. Well, Aiken stopped it from being a touchdown. Oh, it's almost. out at the three. <laughs> that was oh, a heads-up play from Aikens, but these fans must know this is it. I kind of got excited. <laughs> everybody, everybody was on their feet in this place. First and goal, Scotland. 34 seconds left. On the ground they go. Stecker looks, looks, can't get anywhere. Nick Ferguson was there. Time out, time out, ref. There is no quit in this Ryan Fire defense. They played beyond themselves all day. Well, Kevin Daft will confer with his coach. Okay, now we got check with him and make sure we got one timeout left. I think we do. Tell him to come off the ball now and get after him. We're gonna run, we're gonna run. Hey, we got one left. Tell, tell him to, to head that thing north and south. I'm gonna go okay? talk to the ref, make you sure You wanna get Ben in? Hey, I wanna go ask the ref if we got one left too. Yeah, he just said, tray right, six crunch. 
Tell him to come off the ball. No motion. I think we should have gone with Ben. Hey, what we talking where? about, you know, maybe they get a, a Steve Fisher type return. We just talked about it coming into the break, and on, he outkicks his coverage, and boom, big play. Sanford, who had a 95-yard kickoff return for a touchdown last week in Amsterdam. Another huge return here. Second down. 23 seconds left on the ground. Stecker dives forward. Is he in? He's in! Touchdown, Scotland! That was all Stecker. It's been marked by one official as a touchdown, and now it's confirmed. And with 15 seconds left, the Claymores are back in front. Offensive line had a great surge, just like Coach Kreiner asked for, and all stuck. I tell you, built low to the ground. The guy's been his leader all. He leads the league in every category: rushing, touchdown, receiving. Stecker's a player. Rob Hart with the extra point. That's good, and it's a seven-point lead. And the Ryan Fire need a miracle now. Aaron Stecker, his seventh rushing touchdown of the season. It couldn't have come at a better time. Big line surge by the big guys up front. That's all Jim Kreiner asked for. Just hands it to Stecker. He has great vision. Low, built low to ground, and he just wanted that. He just took the defender into the end zone with it. No denying Stecker this time. He'd been contained throughout this ball game. But he needed three. He got three. And the Scottish Claymores can virtually say, World Bowl, baby. It's looking good, I tell you that much. But you can't, I mean, like I said, you can't take anything from this Ryan Fire team. They came out and they gutted it out. And Jamie Baisley, wow. But you know what we've had in this game? Everything. Hey, Who's to say Galen Hall's Ryan Fire team won't come up with something on this kickoff? We'll see. It's been strange today. It really has been. One trip, 70 corner. They need a miracle. Hail Mary the second, number two. It's done the field, Mike. 15 seconds One remaining. Trip, right? One trip. Hey, Soya. Hey, Soya. Have the Claymores brushed them aside? Can the fire get it back? Pearson and Fisher are the return men. And a line drive from Rob Hart. <laughs> Takes a good Scotland bounce, and Pearson will try to be a hero. And nothing doing, the coverage. Excellent, Saran Stacey. Has had a good couple of special team stops, the veteran, the former running back who rejoined this team in the most bizarre circumstances a couple of weeks ago. Came over here to be inducted into the Scotland Hall of Fame. They lost Brian Smith, a special team standout, and they said to Stacey, hey, don't go back to Birmingham, Alabama. Stay and play some football with us. And he did. And, and here he is. And it seems like since he's been back, this team is 3-0. They were 2-0, and with the win today, which is pretty much evident, they'll be 3-0 with Saran Stacey on the team. Well, is he a miracle worker? He's got nine seconds and no timeouts to get this team 80 yards. Marcus Ray is standing 27 yards deep. Werfel throwing and hoping, and it's caught by Olo Lalalare, the Nigerian running back, Matt Finkis, pushing him out of bounds. But it's put it up in the air and hope time for the Rhine Fire. That's all they can do. But, you know, they put forth a value now, but these guys came out here, they stuck to their game plan, and they played well. I mean, we it's just an unfortunate trip. deal. 70 Hail Mary. Where oh, special man. teams cost. Hold them, guys. They got to hold it. Hail Mary time for the Ryan Fire. And if this is a World Bowl dress rehearsal, we are in for a great World Bowl at the end of this month. Werfel will put it up in the air and hope. And the ball is hanging and dying, and it's picked off by Marcus Ray, and that will do it. Ray wants to be a hero, and he's still on his feet, and brought down from behind, it's game over. Marcus Ray, big play Ray, that's what the teammates call him, and he said, T-Max, I'm gonna do something to make you say, big play Ray. 
And look at those fans in the stands, everyone on their feet. What a tough battle this has been. This has been an excellent ball game. Lots of defense, lots of big plays on special teams. Guys flying around, making plays. Jamie Baisley, I mean, what an effort. Unlikely heroes, big plays from unlikely sources. It had everything, this game. I mean, we got another game to go, but I want to say something to those people in the stands on both sides. You were wonderful today, and thank you very, very much. And Jim Kreiner congratulating his fans. He knows his team is close now. If the Dragons lose later this weekend, Scotland are definitely through. Yes, they are. And the cross of St. Andrew flying proudly here at Hamden. What a game. Absolutely. But you got to give your hats off to this Ryan Fire defense, Nick. These guys came out and played well. I mean, I said that they had this bend but don't break philosophy, but they played more like a dictating type defense today. That front seven really got out them, and the secondary played well. These guys gave up a lot of yardage, a lot of touchdown passes, but they were stout today. So let's take a look at the standings and see exactly what this means. This tough win for the Scottish Claymores against the previously number one ranked Ryan Fire. It means they're both six and three now, both still in control of their own destiny, and both surely world bowl bound, barring a late collapse. It's been a terrific game. It had everything. In the end, it had a moment of heroism from Silesio Sanford with that punt return. Finished off by Aaron Stecker. 31-24 Scotland over Ryan Fire. For Tim Mackay, this is Nick Horning saying, hope you enjoyed this as much one as we did. Until next week, bye-bye for now. Thanks very much indeed. And we have Jim Kreiner down on the field. Jim, that was a tough, tough victory. How important was it for this team? Uh, it was, it's what we've been building for all year long. So obviously, to be able to win today was, was a great, great step for our program. But also to come from behind after they tied it up, you know, and, and play well there in that last offensive drive was very important for our football team. We had several opportunities that we didn't take advantage of in the third and fourth quarter. And so for the players to put those behind them and come back and play well was really important to our team and certainly should give us real momentum going into our last game next week. And, and if, we, if we get a win there, hopefully an opportunity to go back to the big game because that's what we're playing for. Hi, Coach Kreiner, Tim McKay. You know, you remember me, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah, Tim. <laughs> hey, I said as one of my keys, you guys had to control the line of scrimmage. And your big guys didn't really play that well the first time. Are you pleased this time? Very much so. We had that one series just before halftime, you know, where where we kind of got out of our technique and they got after us a little bit, but they came back in the second half and played much better. So I'm very pleased on both sides of the ball how we've played. Uh, Jim, your special teams play seems to have got better. You were very conservative early in the season. You seem to be making some things happen now. Well, we've got, uh, I think a lot of it has to do with the players learning the system and, and, and finding the right kind of guys like Silesio to mature into being a, an outstanding returner. And, and that helps, you know, when you end up having a guy like that and then we start doing some things to give him opportunities. Yes, yeah, Silesio Adams, I, was, I mean, Sanford, I was going to ask you about what, is, what has happened to this guy? I mean, the last two weeks he's come up big for you. Well, he, he's, he's a perfect example of what this league is, is all about for guys that want to play in the NFL. They just need those opportunities, and he has matured with the opportunities that he's had and developed into a real quality football player. Jim, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very much, guys. Hey, okay, Ben. Silesio, many congratulations. What was going through your mind as you made that punt return? Uh, thank you first, you know. What was going through my mind was just, first thing, just catching the ball and making something happen, get up the field, get closer to the end zone as I can as possible. And I almost got in there, but, you know, ah, I'm just glad I can make something happen. Silesio, T-Mac. What's up, T-Mac? Outstanding game. Uh, what, what's gotten into you? I mean, last week you did the same thing. Is, is it something you've personally been working on, or is it just Salacio's sidestep? Hey, you know how it is, T-Mac. You know, I'm just glad I can, you know, had the opportunity to be out there. You know, it's just getting, the thing, getting things done the way I can. I'm still my teammates on the sideline. They keep kicking me the ball. On the kickoff return, I was going to make something happen. And they, you know, kicked it to me on the punt return. I was just, you know, glad to get it, you know. It's just perfect opportunity at the perfect, perfect time, so I'm just glad. 
Hey, good job, Salicio, and thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.